can see like a few anemones on some of these hemichorallium. Paragorgia it seems to have a few more brittle stars on it when we see them, the bubblegum corals. Like the one on the left of frame right now. Stocked glass sponge here. Two zero three one five, George. These also orient themselves into the current. So this uh, is a bridge control. Any copy? A little bit different sponge and we've been seeing a lot of we see a lot of the polisoma uh, stock glass sponges but this one is advena yeah. magnificus according Copy to George. chris kelly our lead scientist ashore they might be getting ready to shift change yeah two zero three one five please have we kind of gone up on top i've lost track a little bit i guess near the top of the ridge Looks my, like my watch is slowly filtering in. I'm sad to go. <laughs> I know. You. You're welcome to hang this out. This one went by fast. I'll be in the lounge, believe me. <laughs> That's what I've been doing all morning is watching <laughs> you guys. Yeah, your four-hour watch turns into a 20-hour watch. <laughs> Yeah. Hello. Aww. It's going to be interesting to see what gets pulled for highlight videos. Um, after a day or two, we try to have a pretty quick turnaround. Um, thanks to the better uh, satellite connection, we have a production team ashore who is taking a lot of this, uh, these highlights and, and editing down into nice little short pieces that you can see on the Nautilus Live website. Um, if you go to this expedition page, NA138, or you can also click on the gallery link and that will take you there too. Oh, it looks like Christopher is back, so I'm gonna give him back his seat. Hey there.
All right, well, we're still kind of adjusting, getting everybody caught up to uh, what happened as we do this transition. Uh, I was looking at our science chat, and um, the team's making a good point, is that all of the hard work of mapping these areas happened at the end of 2021, and just wanted to really give a shout out to all the teams who were part of that work, because that is what allowed us uh, to identify these amazing areas to dive on, since this is really only a very small part of the overall seamount. So thank you for all of that great work. There's a question asking what the strangest unexpected man-made thing you found might be. I'm sure some of the longtime folks would have some good good answers there. We've actually, I, I noticed uh, on this dive that they had more net wrapped around coral. Yeah, I think we've seen at least three pieces of marine debris. There's a net that was stuck on some coral. There was a rope that was laying in the, one of the nodule fields that we saw. And there was another piece of, I think, net, plastic net that was caught in some coral in, in the last dive we had. So three out of our five dives in a protected area, we still are finding marine debris. Would you mind doing the switcheroo? Thank you. Interesting. Sweet. Yeah, these aren't, these aren't, uh, oop, my bed. I was in the uh, Northern Lao Basin a few years ago and we uh, saw some old pop cans on the seafloor. Uh, looked like they were from uh, maybe the 1980s and we figure it was from some older research expedition or uh, uh, some sort of uh, ship transiting through that may or may not have taken care of their garbage properly. Did you just call them pop cans? Yes, I'm from Michigan. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it's pop. Pop. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love that highly regionalized uh, uh, dialects. There's like a there's a test you can take where you answer it's a New York Times test I think where you answer a bunch of questions and it predicts where you're from and it always gets it right it's crazy it always gets it right yep. <laughs> um, okay, so, uh, okay, what are we seeing? We have some of that pink coral. Which one is it? I think that's one you know. Uh, well, I know we've been seeing a lot of hemichorellium because yeah, I've been watching the chat. Sweat. Oh, okay, you're watching cheat the chat. Cheat. That's all right. That's good. That's good. I, I think you know we've what? been seeing some precious corals too. You're right? informed. Those are precious corals. Yeah, a couple of different colors though. So mm -hmm. you get the there's some dark kind of pale pink one and the yeah the darker pink. Mm -hmm. A lot of dead sponges too. A lot of alive ones. Yeah, Chris Kelly just. We were just looking at a really unusual one called, if I remember correctly, at Venus Magnifica. Oh. Is that, is looked like a bolosoma with a long stalk, but then a very small, flat uh, uh -huh. head to it. Cool. Yeah. I know head's about the right term, but. So uh, this looks like some pretty heavy marine snow ground. Yeah, the turbidity of the water is definitely yeah. uh, different than what we've been seeing. Yeah, so even though we're not too far from that rock face, it's a lot harder to see what we're what we're looking at. Yeah, it makes our makes it a little bit tougher to view things in that bright, clean way. But mm -hmm. man, it sure does make for a lot of corals and sponges to be able to live. Yeah, yeah this is way murkier than yesterday. I had to go back and think about that for a second. We did finish the dive yesterday. It's just, uh, it's, you know, uh, All right, coming down. it can be hard to keep track of the day when you're yeah. on uh, some of these four and eight schedules. Yep. You always gotta have to go check yourself. 
It's a bit of a blur. Well, arguably the last two and a half years have been a blur in their own <laughs> way too, so I'm just rolling with it. Um, we don't have an eDNA sample, so if at some point we feel like we're in a sort of dense coral community, that might be a cool thing to get. Sounds like a good thing to prioritize. So yeah, let's uh, keep an eye open for a good spot. All right, we are in a much better situation now than we were a few minutes ago. Um, so Val, what's the what's the game plan here? It looks like we're going to go up a ridge. Yep. I'd say let's let's uh, move along the ridge. Uh, See where are we headed toward uh, waypoint two, and uh, along that, uh, we're going to look for a uh, pretty dense, diverse community where we can get an eDNA sample. We, m yeah. So that. would you like to go like maybe here, around here, like or like straight the edge there? up? I don't know. Um, let's hug the side of the ridge. Okay. Um, yeah. So you're the first direction you pulled. Yeah, that looks like a good, uh, good direction to go. Okay. Yeah, those walls seem to be covered. Yeah. yeah. Check it out, and then if we can, like you know. Easy pop over for a rock, easy pop over for a view. Exactly, yeah. Interesting morphology on this ridge. So we'll be it's going like on zero three five. One zero. No, zero three five. Zero three five. Yes. Roger. This honestly, there's quite a bit going on here. Yeah. A lot of prim primnoids, maybe. Maybe yep, bamboo. I think so. Primnoids, I think. A little more. Dead falls a little. Yeah. So. yeah. This is different than what we were seeing just half an hour ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The rock itself looks different. It was, there was a sort of cliff that looked a lot more, I don't know, maybe granular, rough. I, it doesn't have that sort of smoother shape that we see here. here. And uh, we didn't see hardly any dead coral. They were all Ready for it? all alive. Uh, yeah, go ahead. I'll catch up. Oh, Christopher, Chris Kelly is letting me know that that Advena species Wait, this is a map. Oh, I'll wait. Advena, that's the one that I was looking at the guide, and I was like, that one is... Good afternoon. Uh, can we move the ship on bearing zero three five fifty meters, please? He's saying that the Advena is related it's to Bolosoma, thank you. and it's in the same subfamily. That's why it looks so similar. Mm. Good call on that. I have a headset. Thanks for that, Chris. Are you calling me? Alright. Sorry, guys. I'm just going to get to the right place where I'm supposed to go, and then I'll go back to the seafloor, okay? Sounds good. And a few comments about interesting things that have been seen on the seafloor. One of our viewers mentions that they saw a laptop. Another one what? What? found a container that was full of appliances, so like refrigerators and washing machines. Oh, like something that washed off of a cargo yeah. ship? Yeah. Yeah. Tight. All right, the, the last couple of years, we've actually, uh, within the monument, had a lot of issues with just really heavy seas knocking containers off of container ships. Um, the marine debris team that was out there last summer found a whole bunch of new crocs. Wow. And ironically, a volleyball, Wilson. Mm. Huh. <laughs> um, but just a lot of new stuff, a lot of kind of plastic toys and other things like that. So were they floating or were they uh, in like a container or something on the seafloor? Uh, they had wa they were floating. They washed up on shore. The Sounds like that rubber duck incident that people used ended up using as a way to uh, track ocean currents. Yeah. A couple of decades ago. Yeah. Except with Crocs. <laughs> do you think they'd do a barnacle edition? What's that? Do you think Crocs would do a barnacle special edition? <laughs> <laughs> I think they want to keep that on the hush hush. <laughs> yeah, they would. <laughs> yeah, marine debris is, is one of our biggest challenges in protecting the northwestern Hawaiian Islands just because the uh, North Pacific gyre, the kind of the currents running off the main continents is sort of uh, converge a lot of that debris within the uh, shallow reefs and uh, low elevation islands out there. So there, uh, NOAA and then some great partners have been working to um, at least try to keep up with what's coming and get rid of the most sort of 
uh, damaging nets and other things that land on the coral or might entangle some of our endangered species that live there. We have a younger viewer who is uh, passionate about marine biology and wants to know how they can do this for a job. There's a lot of pathways you can take there to get are. here. There definitely are. I accidentally got into this kind of pathway. Yeah, um, there are some really great programs for marine biology in universities. Um, and you can study, or you could study more general marine science if you're not sure that biology is necessarily exactly what you want to do, but you like marine science. And maybe you'll find yourself getting really into marine geology, like Val, or chemistry. Um, and there are lots of really great opportunities for undergraduates during that time, like the research experience for undergraduates, um, or you get to do research in uh, for a summer and it's um, you know all paid for you to go to that institution. You get housing and you do research in a lab. Um, or NOAA also has some great programs. And I think they even have some for younger students now too, younger than undergrad. Oh, cool. There might be something for high school. Um, but in undergrad, there's the Hollings Fellowship, Scholarship. Yep. Um, yeah. That um, is an excellent one to take advantage of. It is. I've met some great folks through that. Nice. Yeah, University of Hawaii also runs um, an REU program uh, that students can apply for. And uh, the part of it that I'm familiar with is more geologically based. But um, one of the things that they do with uh, the entire group each summer is uh, get you a couple of days out at sea um, on the Kilo Moana, which is a UH Marine Center ship, and uh, uh, do a little bit of oceanic work uh, near the islands just to give you a little taste of that marine experience. There are also, you know, you can always, depending on where you're living, um, get in some experience or try out marine science by volunteering for different organizations near you. Like, I don't know, I, I just know things in Florida where I went to undergrad, but there, there, there was like the Mo Marine Laboratory and Coral Restoration Foundation, and there are, yeah, lots of, you know, summer, summer experiences for volunteering places too. Google is your friend. <laughs> there are lots of opportunities out there. Yeah. Yeah, and we do, uh, like, uh, OET does some uh, uh, internship opportunities, correct? Yeah, that's how I got into this and how I think multiple of us got into this. Um, but there are four types of internships you can do on OET um, as an undergraduate or I think uh, also a master's student. So as a student, um, and those include uh, the ocean science internship, which where you work on the uh, science management team and process the samples and your data logger, um, or there is, and that's what Fiona is right now, or there's the video internship, which Rhett in this van is doing right now. Um, and there is the mapping internship and an ROV internship. Um, and I think actually the navigator internship is separate, but that's sort of a mapping navigator position. Uh, when I was an undergrad, I had no idea that, that uh, those kinds of opportunities existed, but it's possible that that was long enough ago at this point that some of some of these opportunities we're talking about now uh, may have come into existence since. I, I was lucky enough to uh, get into this kind of uh, realm because of uh, uh, one of my graduate advisors um, who goes out to sea every now and again on these kinds of expeditions. and. Uh, he got some uh, grant work funded that um, helped fund my PhD, and that involved going out to sea, and that's that's where I got the bug. Gotta say, we're in very different terrain than the previous watch. Yeah. Um, there's yeah. still still some coral scattered around, but they were they were seeing very steep kind of canyony walls and just incredibly dense communities. Yeah, Were they, they transiting up the side too? It like looks like they're here. transiting. Yeah, they're transiting the side, and then it looks like they moved up before we uh, mm -hmm. before we did the watch change. So up here, we're seeing quite a bit more sedimentation and uh, less of the obvious uh, 
uh, pillow basalt morphology, like the stacks of pillow basalts that we were seeing in the super area. So um, I'm guessing this, there's probably some sort of a link between the amount of sediment that we're seeing uh, and uh, the reduction in uh, density of uh, uh, animals. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll keep uh, looking out, and if it's advantageous, we may uh, try to move a little bit downslope, too. But Ooh, what are y'all? Look at that. Ah. Weird scrimp with big antenna. Uh, Rhett, um, Chris is asking if we can uh, put the high pack uh, screen up on channel three for a few minutes. Thanks. Anybody have a favorite coral? Mm. I really like the bubblegum corals. Those are yeah. those are cool. Gorgeous to see. I like the aritagorgia with the yes. with the helical yeah. stems. That one so is beautiful. Beautiful stalks, I suppose. What's what's the better term for that stalk? Stalk, I guess. Okay. Mm. Yeah, I had been thinking already Gorgia too. Those are really they're spectacular. Incredible. That is one of my favorites. I think just for color, I like the uh, Crowleums with the um, zoanthids that have partially mm. taken oh, over. Yeah. So you get that kind of pinkish and yellow. Is that cheating? <laughs> <laughs> no. No. At least I'm not trying to say lava again this time. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you can look. You can look forty-five if you like to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is yeah, really different. Gosh. It's very rubbly here. <laughs> so this is another of our longer planned dives. We're planning to be down for about forty-eight, uh, forty-eight, twenty-four hours. I can do math. So um, this is going to be a lot of uh, video footage, and we're going to space out our sampling uh, a little bit more as well. And we're moving pretty slow. I think one point something knots is the plan. Probably point something knots. Probably point something. <laughs> one knots. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, sorry. One point something. Yeah, yeah. Point two or something. <laughs> we're going point two right now. That would be off to the races, man. Thank you. <laughs> These are interesting sponges here. They look a little. Yeah, what's that one? A quick zoom? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. No, there's two of them. You got one in the center, too. Oh, yeah. Little guy. And then this one. They are some kind of stalked sponge. The very thin stalk. Yeah, I like can't see. even see it. Oh wow, it's Barely. tiny. It's shoestring. Huh, interesting. It does look like it's just floating there, doesn't it? Gotta push on in there. Yeah. Let's get there. Oh, there we go. Okay. Nice. The crinoids on it. We guys. I don't think we've seen any of these before. We haven't. I don't think so either. Yeah, Chris, I agree. Um, we're we're in a, a gentler slope up here. Zero three five. Pretty Zero three five now. Reg. You gonna come a little wide there, please? Okay. I think we're we're gonna eventually head into some. Uh, uh, another move zero three five fifty meters. Yeah, if we if we follow uh, that this that contour, we'll get steeper again. Christopher, Chris Kelly's gonna look it up for us. Yeah, I think Hylostylus. Alright, you can go ahead okay. and push on in a bit partial. Okay, so we have a request from uh, Beth, who's working on uh, uh, microbes in the rocks. Uh, if we notice the O2 concentration um, approaching 50 micromolars, that's when we should start looking for a sample for her. She, so she's interested in what some of the colonies might look like in uh, lower oxygen uh, environments. Awesome. Yeah. Would you mind maybe, um, like I'll try and keep an eye on it, but sometimes I will forget with all the screens I have sure. open, having Grafana open on yours to the right? Yeah, I've got Grafana open over here. Yeah. So, yeah, I'll keep an eye on that. Um, yeah. We'll just pull Separate that out. window, yeah. Yeah, perfect. Right, you got any more zoom there? Yeah. I pick up. See the structure a little bit. So, yeah, we're at a... Beautiful. Just under 63 micromole per liter um, on the O2. All right, go ahead and right. go partial wide, or full wide. Yeah. USBL is looking a little cray-cray on that screen. <laughs> the USBL? Yeah. A little bit. Full wide, please. Hyalo stylus. Um, very nice. Good call, Leela. Woohoo. 
hit since we hit the seafloor a couple hours ago. We've made some horizontal progress, but we're still at about 2,100 meters of depth. Pressure down here is about 210 times what it is in air above sea level. And it's a whopping 2 degrees Celsius or so. All right, we're getting a little more angle on things. Yeah, starting to see a bit more, maybe. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna get steeper again. Looking at high pack uh, as we follow this contour, so um, we're finding quite a bit more um, uh, animal life, uh, corals and sponges and such, uh, on the steeper sides of these ridges. So um, we're, we're spending a little more time off ridge on these dive tracks with occasional hops up onto flatter areas to uh, look for rocks if we don't see anything uh, grabbable on the on the slopes so yeah at some point later on we might move uh, up to the ridge crest but for now I think we're gonna be pretty happy uh, sticking along the sides here and seeing what uh, seeing what we can see Starting to see a little more Chrysogorgia. Yeah, yep. we're back into. We always see this bottle brush Chrysogorgia. Seems to like the pillow lavas for whatever, <coughs> for whatever reason. This is kind of more of a uh, nose of a sheet flow from the looks of it. A nosing sheet. Uh, uh, oh, just the nose of a sheet oh, flow. Sorry, oh, oh. The words kind of mushed together. One of our viewers sent in their favorite coral. Oh, nice. Uh, it's a viewer named Jason who likes the giant bamboo coral, Jason Isis. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. Can't imagine why. <laughs> Ooh. Can we do a quick zoom on that coral? Uh, which one? Uh, which the one? On the right? The brown one? Brownish yellow? Yeah. This, this one? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I was just going to ask you what you thought about that one. Probably bamboo. That was my guess. It's heavily branching. All right, right. Go ahead and whoop, start using uh, That makes sense. Uh, Chris uh, is suggesting that the density of corals is decreasing probably because uh, the substrate is less consolidated. Mm. They, they're not really fans of rubble. See if this will help or if this will make it worse. Worse, better. It's that's hard good. to see, that's, but that's I think helpful. it's a bamboo. I thought I saw some noting further. down below. Yeah. Yeah, you can kind of see it by the, it's like node, nodal branching. Sorry, I'm not getting the most stable cool. Yeah. Thank you. Partial light, please. It's okay. Do you need to see the base for this guy, or are you good? I think that's all good. <coughs> thing next to it looks <laughs> full <bit> wide. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame the, uh, the corals and the sponges for not really liking the rubbly substrate. Uh, in my uh, more terrestrial field days, I've scrambled for better or for worse uh, across a share um, more than my share of tallest piles and they're uh, they're, they're not as fun as um, more in place substrate it gets a little slippy don't try that at home folks it's not it's not the safest thing you can do <laughs> don't try that in the field either especially around volcanoes especially around volcanoes Well, I've got a question. Are these volcanic beds? Volcanic beds. Um, yes. Uh, so the uh, the substrate that we're looking at here is all volcanic in origin. Uh, we're uh, exploring one of the ridges of an extinct volcano. 
We think it was active uh, in the Cretaceous, probably sometime between about 75 and 100 right, million years ago. Sure thing. Thank you. That's great there. It's pretty Uriality. spectacular coloration here. Whoop. Yeah. That was supposed to be more of a circle. Uh -huh. <laughs> Wait, you, f you framed it though, so. Yeah, you I was like bracketing real. it. Yeah. <laughs> Pull away, please. We have several priorities on this dive. We are not only looking at the living organisms and evaluating those, but we're also looking for rock samples. Looking for clues as to the age of these seamounts and the origins. A lot of these rocks have come up from the mantle and bring with them some clues as to what's going on down there as well. We're also looking at the bacteria that live on the nodules here. Um, we have two lead scientists on board. Both of them are uh, kind of focused on the rocks. We also have scientists ashore that are interested in the biology of the seamounts that we're looking at. We're conferring with them. So we'll be going forth between the flashy corals and the equally flashy rocks. <laughs> it's flashy in a different way. Yep. Well, how many kilograms of rocks do we have in our collection so far? I forgot what it was on the board. <laughs> um, as of a couple of dives ago, dive 1918, we just crossed the 200-pound uh, mark. So right. I have about 91.7 kilograms of rock uh, up to that point. Um, that doesn't include the dive that we finished yesterday, though, because I haven't uh, uh, finished processing all of those. So not all of that data is uh, tabulated yet. So that that's something I'm hoping to do a little bit this evening. Be one heavy suitcase at the airport if you were bringing all that home. Oh my gosh. I, I have taken rocks home in a suitcase before, and uh, TSA likes to search those because they look really weird on their scanners. <laughs> I bet they do. Yep. <laughs> About 30 pounds of rocks in a suitcase a couple years ago uh, after visiting Honolulu's uh, our <laughs> University of Hawaii uh, Geological Archive to retrieve a couple of things. And uh, yeah, that, that was uh, thankfully a short conversation, but it was interesting. <laughs> What's with all the rocks, lady? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, study rocks. Literally <laughs> a box full of rocks. <laughs> I, I get boxes of rocks occasionally in, in the mail. And you know, most people probably wouldn't appreciate that. But Keep it's, 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 like, it's like geological Christmas Pretty when that now. happens. <laughs> I one time was coming Another through. Another move step with a huge, like two roller, huge roller bags of, uh, of like coral um, samples. Fish. And I'm actually looking at this area and this might be a good DNA spot. Yeah, it's looking a lot better um, again. Maybe let's, I'll hold on this story and we can pop an DNA bottle here. Roger that. I love Sounds good. Big pop whip. Sample first, story yeah, later. Booze. Yeah. Sample first, story later. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very nice. This looks more like what the earlier watch was seeing. We still have a ground on the craft. Roger. Is the current coming from the direction that we are facing? Uh, current's kind of actually a little all over the place right okay. now around this feature. Um, let me get a little closer. Thank you. How far are you off? You want it like two meters or so? Um, like as close as you feel comfortable. Roger. 11k. Oh gosh. Okay. I'm gonna yeah. be on your kill switch, Raj. Also, tell the viewer that the bamboo coral we zoomed on a second ago was Jason Isis. All right. All right. Okay. I guess I, I just called right you. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Paul was trying to tell me it was a hard fault. 
And Dan <laughs> was like, nah. <laughs> 11K is No big deal. Hard. It's still double digits. <laughs> <laughs> Roger. <laughs> uh, all right, I'm going to get a little down there. Um, and we're going for number one. Right now we're right. pulling a Niskin bottle. There's a bottle with a, a stopper that will right, close. Yeah, yeah. Off that side, when we pull this Bila, it's, it's pretty 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 close to the ground. Okay, perfect. I probably guess about three meters for that side, maybe two. Give it to me. Go for anyone if you want. Yeah, Raj. Being jumpy. Yeah. Lila's gonna have fired two. Number two is two? fired. Yeah. Okay, sure, thanks. Yeah. All right. And we're about, <coughs> probably about, yeah, two meters off for that one. Okay. Jump the arms. Yeah. Sweet. Poke your eye out. <laughs> There's a question about whether nice. Hercules has any UV lights installed. Someone else was asking about that. I wonder what's the rave about UV lights right now. I think wondering if the uh, corals are fluorescent. We probably have a bunch of aquarists on the chat. Oh, maybe. Given some of the colors we saw, I would almost be surprised if they didn't fluoresce. Roger. Yeah. I like to think that the movie Avatar with James Cameron was got it right and that this is all just like lit up under here and just our eyes yeah. and our sensors cannot perceive it. Mm. I'd be really sad if that was not the case. So Chris says, um, with this Jason Isis that we looked at a few minutes ago, um, close-up was showing that the polyp stocks are filled solid with sclerites, which are the coral equivalent of sponge spicules. Um, well, this is a structural feature of that coral. So it's, uh, as a result, the polyp stocks, he says, uh, don't look clear but white because of how solid that structure is. Another question from, question from a viewer. Uh, how often do we come across large sea creatures during the descent and ascent? Very rarely, yeah. honestly. It's a lot of water compared yeah. to them. There are a few highlights on the nautiluslive.org website, under, I think under the gallery, where there was a oceanic white tip, I think, that they saw, and then a sperm whale. That would be spectacular. There was a sperm whale, for sure. I know I've seen that one. On the last cruise, we were seeing a lot of white tips um, around the vehicles uh, at the surface. That's so cool. It was really cool. All around the tether, too. Wow. <laughs> I was worried they were going to start flossing their teeth with it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you just, like, stop descent at that point or race no. it? No. No. I just, we were at the surface, basically. Ah. Like, within like five meters of the surface. We were okay. during uh, recoveries mostly, when at least when I was in the van. We saw a pretty large jellyfish yesterday as the ROV was coming up. Yeah. Oh, that's right. We did. For a brief moment. Yeah, it was yesterday. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Time is meaningless. Time is a construct. It so, definitely wow. is. 
if we did come across something really cool, would we pause the ascent? Yeah, totally. Okay. If it was like a whale again, oh yeah, oh yeah. Unless there was something wrong with the vehicles and like, or the ship or something. Like unless there was, we weren't just recovering because it was the end of a dive, but we were recovering because we had a uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> pri prioritize what science when we can. <laughs> An uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's a carte blanche uh, uh oh. <laughs> we made an oopsie. <laughs> yeah. yeah, generally speaking. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think you were starting to tell a story right before oh. the DNA. Yeah. I was walking through customs with like two huge bags of coral that we had just collected. And you have to do, coral are, are, are regulated, so you need to fill out a whole bunch of paperwork and, and tell them exactly how many of every kind of sample you have. And it's kind of like a stressful thing uh, mm -hmm. for scientists coming coming back from, you know, their tropical field work to, they because, you know, you want to make sure it all gets back frozen the whole time and safely and you don't get held up for hours ask, answering questions, things like that. Um, and like we walk up and the lady starts asking me like, do you have like starts asking me about food like do you have any fruits that you're bringing back do you have any whatever and i'm like well i mean like i have this sandwich and like there's some tomato in it and she's like okay she just like goes down this 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 hole asking me about like the ingredients of the sandwich and blah 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 and i was like yes 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 but that's not the point that's not why i came here and started walking through why i like volunteered to walk <laughs> through this special line it's not because of my sandwich they're, i think they're like used to people reading you know reading the so something right there whole three and maybe Ooh, nice oh yeah let's see reading here. the things that you're not allowed to bring and then like you know nervously coming through for their sandwich ingredients i'm like no <laughs> i need to get through here and it's not about the sandwich <laughs> oh no Owens got stuck at TSA because I had a fork from the school cafeteria in my backpack. Uh -huh. Oh no! And I said, I don't need the fork. You can just throw it away. And they Did said, No, we have piece? to find out whether forks are legal or not. What? So they just kept me aside, and it took them 20 minutes or half an hour. And finally, it's they like, said, No, yeah. you can take your fork. And I was like, Oh, <laughs> I, don't, I still don't want it. But <laughs> <laughs> and so wild. Is, it was probably a spork, wasn't it? <laughs> Wait, where is this? No, oh, this I is different from the one on Chris's wish list. So as geologists carrying rocks through uh, through security, uh, and especially through customs if you're uh, crossing borders, um, you have to be very mindful of, um, again, those biological uh, restrictions. So one thing that we'll do when we get rocks back from the field and before flying home um, is literally just go and wash them. You Make know, sure there's nothing Anything on. that there's alive on the, on the surfaces, we, we try to scrub off. You know, uh, they, they have to be quite clean to come through security. So we, we get our, our rocks nice and clean as we do ourselves for that flight. <laughs> we well. also like put on better looking clothing so that we look less like ratty walking. <laughs> you know, we've been wearing whatever, we're like sunburnt. We look like, you know, absolute hot messes, but like going through, <laughs> going, traveling and going through customs, you put on like the one button down that you brought. Yeah. But we are professionals. I think I'm in the process of destroying my raincoat, so it just might have to go through looking a little ratty <laughs> this time around. That is A-OK, -okay, though. Interesting question. How noisy is the ROV, mm. and is it loud enough to disturb the environment? I'd say it's pretty noisy. That's why you probably don't see a lot of fish and marine mammals come in checking this out, because we're really noisy, and we're, like, screaming on the seafloor, you know what I mean? No one wants to hear a ranting vehicle. No. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no Harleys on the day, on the seafloor. <laughs> yeah. We're that annoying neighbor that, like, revs his <laughs> engine at, like, 2 in the morning. Yeah, starts know? mowing the lawn. <laughs> like, Knock it off. Or the one who likes <laughs> to use the leaf blower on the weekends. <laughs> <laughs> like, odd hours, too. No, no, no. Yeah, we're that person under here, but we're only there for a little bit of time. Yeah. 
A lot of whip bamboo, or I guess it's like sparsely branching, but not not like the sparse brancher. There's right. something big. What's in the, the difference? Look at that is too. It? Were you? Yes, of course. This is what this would be the sparse brancher to you. Yeah, at least that 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 one that I can't telestrate. The one that's like the Y, like yeah, that that's one really. This one. Oh yeah. no, this one. Yeah, because like sometimes they branch too much and you can't call it a sparse mm. brancher. Okay. But another yeah, wolf step, step please. Got it. I think Mary Dury would be so impressed. Right, go ahead and push on in partial zoom. That should be good there. See all the different. See, like that one's here. branching too much on the left. Yeah, I agree. Okay. So we have sparse branchers and too much branchers. Got it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like the last one on the left, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. I see that. He's a cool guy. Full away, please. Are sparse branchers just baby baby branched? Like, are they just like um, still young or something or like underdeveloped and not like its own thing? I'm actually not really sure what Mary's trying to like prove with her sparse, sparse branching um, research. I just know that she's looking for s c corals that branch sparsely. Yeah, I think she wants to describe a new species. New species, rather. They really take advantage of these boulders and rises. Yeah. All right, go ahead and partial zoom in there, please. That's great. I keep thinking primnoid and then not being sure when we zoom in. Chris, is this a primnoid or a bamboo or a sako? Uh, my away. guess is primnoid. Yeah. Good. The oh, one with okay, the C maybe? Ca cal not calyptrophora. Maybe calyptrophora, is that what it's called? Paracalyptrophora. Okay, few. O2 concentration okay, wasn't updating there for a there, while. Please. Has not? Uh, it wasn't, and then That's I tried good. refreshing the page, and that Can seems to have fixed wide? it. Okay, great. Yeah. That's better, yeah. Looks like Asako is on the, is thinking the same thing. All right, full light, please. It looks like Calyptrophora, I think. We're still hovering a little bit above uh, 62 micromolar per liter, so um, it's it's dropping, but very slowly. But I think as we continue to move uh, up section along this volcano, we'll uh, we'll see that drop a little bit more, and then we can uh, hopefully uh, snag a good sample for Beth. A question about whether there are any holothurians on the wish list that we're pecking away at. I just poked through. I didn't see any in my yeah. my quick glance. I might have missed one though. I don't think so. Holothurians Is are sea cucumbers. Is it okay if I keep this delta with the sonar? Yeah, all good. Yeah. Raj. Yeah, they're close behind us. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. Yeah, there's a few worms and a sea slug that he's looking for. Yeah, the scale worm looks vaguely haltering like, but is it? It's probably really small. How many different species of hard and soft coral are we encountering while we're di diving down here? Mm. Do we have an estimate? Um, I feel like on any one dive, it's dominated by a few species, like on the order of less than 10 but um but then we're seeing a few a few one-offs here and there or just a couple and we it's also hard to know if they're cryptic species if you know there are slight genetic variations that, that we can't see because morphologically they look pretty similar um so yeah hard to say exactly but i feel like we i don't know here we're seeing like one two three four Five, six, I don't know, actually more, maybe a, a bit more than 10, but 10 to 20.
But then there are also pretty different communities between dives sometimes. So on the course of a whole cruise, we'll see quite a few. I have a question about why the rocks have kind of a bluish tint to them. I'm colorblind, so I'm not the one to answer mm. that question. That might be either water or the white balance on the yeah. screen. Doesn't look too blue to me on our on our screens. Yeah. Rhett, any insight? Yeah, so if you'll notice the further from the camera or from the, the ROV that the rock is, the bluer it appears. Uh, and that's because it's actually the water uh, changing the quality of the light uh, going through it and water is blue uh, and because of that you know looking through water uh, makes other things you're looking at look bluer yeah. that's what I would say is probably the main reason uh, if you look over at the um, the Atalanta view uh, you can see uh, it's focused on Herc from even further away than Herc is from the ground and um, it looks quite blue there uh, that's just a product of the distance that's a good explanation yeah Thanks, right? Yeah, blue has a tendency Good to uh, there, scatter quite a bit, too. That's why our sky appears to be blue. You want porch light? Uh, sure. Yeah. You can see it feeding a little bit. Mm-hmm. Can you see the poo trail? Not quite. Sometimes you see the poo trail behind them. Sometimes you do, yeah. Oh, yeah. Still, like, round sediment pile. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Sea cucumbers play a really important role as sort of the vacuum cleaners of the ocean floor, eating uh, sediment and digesting out the different uh, detritus, the organic matter in it, and then pooping out these little Any sand pellets, there, right? basically. I do. Yeah. Deep sea Roombas. That's yeah. <laughs> Ooh, it's what is that weird stuff on it? I don't know. That almost looks parasitic. It yeah. kind of does, yeah, doesn't, doesn't it? it? But looks spiky. I don't know what it would be yet. Yeah, spiky, weird worm or something. Looks like it's inserted itself through the tissue. Yeah, yeah. What are you? Weird. That sounds painful. Oh, Sorry, right, buddy. Yeah, there's some sea cucumbers that are um, almost transparent, and you can see the Everything. sediment that they've been ingesting going through their digestive system, and it's it's kind of fascinating. <laughs> it's like future poo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> future poo. <laughs> <laughs> I think we just lost one of our pilots. <laughs> <laughs> I'm changing my name. <laughs> I respond only to, to future, future poo. poo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, this is like a my employers are listening. Please Let's ignore me. <laughs> <laughs> my employers this are is listening. going on the highlight reel. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, another question. What's the lithology of the seafloor yes, that we're seeing? This is enough. Is this all basalt or other? Another move, same step. Mm. All right, so we're just making a quick nav adjustment there. Um, yeah, to answer the question, um, the seafloor, uh, like the, the bedrock that we're seeing right now is uh, dominantly lava flows uh, that are also encrusted with a uh, ferromanganese deposit. Uh, we're also seeing a little bit of sediment building up in some of the crevices in these lavas. But as we go higher, um, we're not sure because we haven't been able to uh, find a good spot to sample some of these. Uh, li like uh, yesterday's dive, we were trying to grab a really uh, late dive sample and we just didn't, you know, there just wasn't anything to grab before we had to go up. So, uh, Another uh, whole uh, theory in there. Yeah, uh, it's, there's a question of whether or not there is a lithologic change um, once you get into the flatter top portion of some of these seamounts over to something that's more like a carbonate, possibly even Ooh. phosphate, if uh, it was a bird refuge back in the day, if it was above water, which we aren't exactly sure if they were or not. Um, yeah, but most of what we're seeing here as far as uh, bedrock is uh, volcanic, so a uh, big pile of lavas. What it what is on that hyostalus stock? That purple cryoid, purple cryoid yeah. blends in so much. I love those. They remind me of like spring bluebells. Yeah, oh, they're really yeah. pretty. Is that the Xenometra that we collected the other day, maybe? You guys want a quick save on this? Yeah, guy? do you mind? 
They're just so pretty. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Go ahead and push out in there, please. That's great. Okay, Leon, try Lasers. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful wow. shot. That is beautiful. You know the question we had the other right, day we'll about what deep sea creature we would like want as a pet? <laughs> that particular crinoid. <laughs> <laughs> Not any one. I wanted that one. I like him. He's got pizzazz. He's got pizzazz. He's I got agree. He's got a character. I could see him hanging from like things in like a water, an aquarium thing. Like put some green things. He'll hang on him. He'll climb on him. Yeah. <laughs> Happy little guy. Yeah. yeah. I want that particular. <laughs> I have a biology question for you. Mm -hmm. You know how shallow water sea cucumbers, some of them will exude those cuvarian tubules, those kind of sticky spaghetti protective, yeah. or even sometimes their inner organs? Uh huh. Do you think that these deep sea cucumbers do? I don't imagine they I have the same need. I like in terms of as a anti predation sort yeah. of thing. Um, I don't know. That would be really interesting. I wonder if that's been documented before. There's another one. There. So yeah, shallow <laughs> shallow water cucumbers can sometimes like evade their entire guts. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know if these do that. I've never heard of that. I mean, it's so dark. I don't think anything could see it. So I wouldn't be as evades not the word. But it actually wraps it's itself. Eviscerate. Eviscerate. That's the word. Ooh, that's eviscerate. a good word. It's out its guts. There's, is that a little sea star? Oh, that's sure just a pile of good sand. In the shape of a sea star. Yeah, or is it a sea star? I had a question about camouflage down here. Are there any organisms that we're afraid that we are missing because they blend in with the background? Maybe we just don't know because they blend too well. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. wouldn't know. Um, I gotta I'm say those sure. those chana cops are pretty good at hiding, and they're bright orange. Like I know <laughs> they just still there. <laughs> I know that uh, Katachi saw that one, but he said it was almost past. Camouflage in the dark is pretty easy, I imagine. Well, like I think you were telling us last time, the red wavelength disappears so quickly mm. underwater that these colors we're seeing would mostly appear kind of gray or easily blend in without these bright lights on our ROV. Yeah, this is probably the brightest light that they will ever see. Hopefully. Yeah. Anybody ever have something that really scared them uh, on a dive? Scared? Us. Fishing gear. Fishing gear. Oh, Not scared, yeah. it just makes you mad. Not mad. Mm -hmm. Makes you, you know, it's rogue fishing gear that has been, you know, sometimes they're just piling up seafloor and it's a bit upsetting to see so much stuff we leave down there. Yeah. And it's a hazard for many things, not just ROVs, but also swimming creatures. Yep, in the deeps and in the shallows, that holds true. Mm. Can't One say of our I've viewers seen anything scary either. So just yeah, garbage. Yeah. One of our viewers is going to be painting the <laughs> ghost lily that we just saw. Oh, cool! cool. That's awesome. Like sponge. You could I post it. Be, oh yeah, go ahead. Could they post it to one of our social medias? Oh, that would be cool. Yeah. They could send it in, probably, and we could post it. Is that how it works? Okay. Uh, Can you tell I don't have a lot of social media? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're seeing a lot more holotherians then. Yeah. Yeah. I think you guys are on a holotherian watch. He wants to circle on Just catches okay. my eye. This one's not Hylostylus. I don't think it's Sacocalyx. Meh, what are you?
Yeah, can we take a bit of a look at this one? Yeah, let's yeah, let's do that. All right, go ahead and push that in there a bit, please. That's great. That one's doing that sort of Pikachu face thing. Huh. I can kind of see it. <laughs> 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 laughing with that one. <laughs> 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 Who knew there was Lila, a pokey stop in the bottom of the ocean? Is that good, Lila? Did you uh, get it? Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Okay. Please. I think actually it is Zach O'Calyx. That looks really similar to the reference photo. <laughs> yeah, there. I mean, there are a bunch of different like morphologies of it. I hadn't seen this picture, but All right, I'm going to come up here. Oh, Chris is asking if we could look at the other face. Is it too late? Uh, yeah, I had to sorry. move. My sonar is starting to get a little hot. Okay. okay. Sorry, sorry, Chris. Sorry, Chris. We'll find yeah. another one and we'll Pikachu face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know how there's a lot of people who come on and off this ship with each uh, leg of an expedition? I just learned yesterday there is a Pikachu costume. Oh, yeah, there is. Why? <laughs> Somehow... Like stored one of the in the stored in the lounge, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. That's great. Uh, there's a nice little anemone. anemone of some kind. There's a an anemone. Yeah. An anemone. <laughs> Would listen to the entire control van and try to pronounce that. An anemone. Quite the it's tongue gone. twister. It's okay. Now I'm jumping at shadows, trying to see a chana cups in those little sediment yeah. corners. What um what letters does that start with? C H Ch A U. Chana Clops. No L. Chana Chana, Chana Cops. Chana, Chana Cops. Chana Cops. That is a very satisfying word to say. Chana. It really is. Chana, Chana Cops. Chana Cops. C H A U N A C O P S. Cops. Chana Caps. <laughs> <laughs> sure, depending on where you're from. Robust, it would be. Robust. Can say a bit of that Chana Cops. Shaw shift in there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah somewhere between Boston and like no, like like Ch Michigan accent, <laughs> like that, that, just caps. just play up that northern vowel <laughs> shift. <laughs> so I gotta say, I'm surprised we're not seeing more coral and sponge. These are the perfect walls. They looks are. Like, looks like there's plenty of marine snow coming down. And yeah, I'm seeing a little murkiness sediment. in the water. <laughs> yeah, we've seen them on worse. I've seen good pillow basalts like I wasn't this right here. You that. can see. <laughs> like a pillow basalt rind with uh, some stuff that looks like it stayed hot for a while inside of it. Let's so get that nice radial rim there and then uh, the core yeah. of it. Yeah, wait, that's cool. What, what did you call that? Uh, that's that's a broken off pillow basalt. Oh. So, um, yeah, you can kind of see on this outer rind here, these fractures that kind of radiate outward and yeah. those those are uh, related to structural weaknesses that develop as the uh, as the lava cools and shrinks a little bit um, so it makes it easier to break piece. along those and oh. then in here you That's have that uh, <coughs> you have that core um, and it looks like that was probably some lava that stayed hot and moved through uh, the pillow basalt for a while uh, oh, wait, before please. finally cooling and then eventually at some point just breaking off and forming this face for us to uh, look at so uh, this cross-section so I have a potentially unanswerable biology question talking um, to us there are some of these dives where we see um, a lot of sponge skeletons uh, and I mean those, those have been dead for a while, and the question always comes down to how long it might those have been dead, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure, sure that's something that we that we can necessarily know, but we don't see a lot of those same species that are also alive. Yeah. So, you know, the, my, my question is, is it just these, are, are these skeletons, like, just hanging out for a long time, and we're just kind of seeing them accumulating from just a normal, mm -hmm. like, Secular, secularly stable population, or are we actually seeing evidence for populations changing over time? I think it might be the latter that we're that the sponge skeletons are around for quite a while. I mean, things degrade pretty slowly in the deep sea, um, 
And also, up there. there was that time that I was telling yeah. about la uh, on one of our previous dives Sponge. where, what is that? Growing on, on, the, on the left, yeah. yeah. It's that. It's that one sponge I always forget the name of. That's kind of looks like a backbone. The tree to pleura. I don't think it's that one. What, does it look Lavera? like there's like something living growing on it? Like the darker sections? Hmm. It just doesn't look Could super healthy. Um, head, please? Nope. We've seen... That's good. Oh. Mm. That okay, happened. actually like this, maybe. We've seen sponges that were like really covered in mineral crust, but this like... I wonder if that's the beginning of formation hmm. of some mineral, um, of some some ferromanganese crust or something. Might be because it's been there for a while with like light, with like s millimeters of crust around them. Yeah. Interesting, because doesn't that take a long a really time to long precipitate time. out? So yeah, that skeleton must have been hanging out there for. And a it's long also time. accumulating sediment too, so that's a good time marker. Perfect timing with the question. Yeah, <laughs> apparently. Dead Ferraid. Ferraid. Okay, I'll try to remember it this time. All right. Um, Suleiman, I'm thinking for our next move, um, maybe we start moving further north uh, toward waypoint two. Would that be all right? Yep. Cool. Yes. And uh, yeah, if we see an opportunistic grab as we start to get into the splatter areas uh, on, on, the, on that traverse, um, I'll be on the lookout for a rock. Sure thing. Awesome. Yeah, I'm keeping an eye on the O2 concentration and it's still, it's very slowly going down, but we're still above uh, 60, uh, 60 micromole per liter. So still a ways to go on that for, uh, for uh, so. Beth's sample uh, prospects. Zero zero five. Yeah, and maybe since we're going to be going like up. straight up, then uh, let's make them like thirty meter moves and then kind of stack those. Okay. Thank you. Looks like we're getting into a little more coral density for the moment. Yeah. <coughs> coral density. Yeah, it's interesting how it's kind of coming in waves. Yeah. You ready for it? Yes. And bridge. This is Nev. There's the first. 30 meters on bearing zero, zero, 005. Uh, negative three zero meters, 30 meters. Yes. Zero, zero, 005. This batch is really different than the ones we were seeing at the beginning of the dive. Hemicryum, primnoids, yeah. some bamboo mixed in there, Chrysogorgia bottle brush. With bamboo. Yeah, it's pretty similar. We had a question about oh. our watch schedule. Um, we are typically on uh, with the same group of people. There are three watches that we rotate take four hour shifts and then eight hours later we do another four hour shift so we are the 12 to 4 Hawaii time shift what you looking at I think it's just a primo I was just curious I was gonna ask Lila what she thought that was right there oh yeah it does look like a primnoid just a growth habit was a little bit sorry flat. you, you want to yeah. zoom on the kind of sorry Chris. flatter one there do a quick zoom. Yeah, yeah. Wait, let's do a quick look. Go ahead, there, right? Yeah. There's so you got two things in there. What is that crawling on there? Um, it oh, looks the like a hemicrylium behind it. Oh, the red thing. Yeah. What are you? Yeah, I don't know. Let's see if I can get us a little bit more stable of a yeah. shot here. I think I can go a little further. Is it like squared a, a, a sa satchel, like egg, egg something? Yeah, it's so hard to tell. There's. Huh. All right, go ahead and push it a little bit more. Uh, what yeah, are, are you? you? Sorry. That's okay. You're Stand good. by. Come a little wide, please. I think 
there's a smaller one right above it. All right. So you have that one there and then something else somewhere there. Huh. Huh. Yeah. So I just can't tell. Experts ashore? <laughs> <laughs> Is it an anemone? Like a tiny, tiny, tiny one? Or like a... Uh, jelly? Okay, I now go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't have a lot of tentacles. I know, but what oh, are you? Is it? Is that full? Is it that looks <laughs> like a. It looks like a cnidarian of some kind. It does, I doesn't it? Like, ri like the radial symmetry. Blowing in the but breeze. It looks like there would be four. Like it almost looks like a cubozoid. If there was a fourth little tentacle, it would look like a cubozoid. Maybe in the okay. backside. Cnidarian. Like away from us. Yeah, it maybe. It's acting a little bit like a jelly. Crazy little thing. Huh. Thanks. Yeah. yeah you thanks. got that on still cool, scale, please? Cool. Oh, not on stills because it's too far away. Oh, okay. It still yeah, never mind. Zoom, but Could it be that the coral polyp grabbed onto that? It doesn't look like a coral. No, the, the coral that it's oh, on, I'm talking about. It grabbed onto that. Who knows? Yeah. yeah, maybe it's caught in the mucus or something. The polyp's eyes are bigger than its stomach. <laughs> <laughs> All I can think of is, hey, we found a round thing. Can you help us figure out what it is? <laughs> uh, so, so, Christopher, I'm sorry, you were you were saying about watches? Oh, yeah, I was just saying that we are on uh, our four hours on, eight hours off watch schedule for the control van. Every position, there are eight main spots in the van, so we've got a a person to rotate through each of those and then we have some other folks in addition that may come in and join us add to the crew at different times the front row of the control van are the pilots of the rov and the navigator and the video engineer all making it work so that we can see what's going on Chris Kelly is working on an ID. Uh, he says it's some sort of a predatory jellyfish that we just saw. Weird. Yeah. Which the cubozoans are, are like, they, they're jellyfish that can actually, like, find and track their prey and chase after them. Hmm. I wonder, just the, like, four-sided shape of that. I don't know. It's weird because they, they don't even have that? a brain. I have no What's idea that? what they use to do that. Yeah, because jellyfish don't. If, am I correct in saying they don't have brains as we they normally don't. understand them? Yes, yes. you yeah. are. No centralized nervous system. They do have communication, like their muscles can communicate with each other to like undulate, but there's no coordinating part that we are aware of. Oh, that's an enemy back there. Of this. I think that's a star over there, or just a uh, mushroom coral yeah, yeah. or something. Yeah, mushroom coral, mushroom. yeah. Okay. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Hydrozoans, ah, other group, really. Okay. How would you pronounce that? You want lasers off for this? Aginona. Aginona sure. species. Got a little bit of... going to come down a wee bit. Hydrozoans, oh, are. other group. Interesting. Did I get a shot? That's wow, a that is a... Calyptrophora, paracalyptrophora. That's a nice little community right there. Oh, Ryan just put the link in our science chat. Ah, perfect. Thanks, Ryan. Shall we make another move? Yep. Yeah, all good. Thank you. Praise, uh, this is enough. Another move, same step, please. Right, you want to go ahead and push on in there a bit? That's good. Chris says the coral didn't catch it but it caught the coral instead. Huh, interesting. Yeah. Its eyes are definitely bigger than its stomach. <laughs> <laughs> All right, full wide, please. Oh, wow. Which is pretty remarkable for a critter that doesn't have eyes. <laughs> 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 oh, sure enough, that's it. Yeah. Do they have a stomach? I believe so. Okay. A, a, a guinea day, a guinea What the... A gin a day, a a genoa, a genonoa, a gin o na. Okay. <laughs> a gin o na. That's what it is. <laughs> That's a hard combination of consonants. Go ahead and push on in there, partial, please. That's great. 
Oh, wow. That's a good one. Good call, Sam. Yeah. There's a lot going on. A genonom. Partially dead hemicorallium. With something growing over it. Little bits alive down at the base branches. Oh, yeah. Mushroom coral in there, too. Yep. All right, pull wide, please. Beautiful shot. I like this bathymetry slash topography that we're looking at. Mm -hmm. Can I call it topography or is that just wrong? Bathymetry. Bathymetry. Yeah, we're underwater. I'm so, a yeah. mountain climber. This feels. I sometimes I'll revert over to topo when I'm being lazy, but uh, yeah, it is bathymetry. properly bathymetry. Hydrozones are so tough because they spend, like some of them spend more of their time as Medusa jelly-like structure and others spend more of their time uh, in polyps. And it's really hard to know like what, whether, what you're looking at. Yeah, that morphology has got to be all over the place for those. Mm -hmm. Some big Chrysogorge over there. I mean, that's, that's where, yeah, it's just like, way beyond me as a geologist because like a CPX, like a clinopyroxene in a rock, um, it has characteristics that, that tell you what it is and those are usually pretty consistent <laughs> from rock to rock. So it's like, you know, I, I, it, <laughs> I know when it's a CPX or it's some sort of uh, thing that is altering from CPX and yeah, it's, it's more predictable. <laughs> Another all three and down there. Yeah. Don't exactly get clinopyroxene polyps. <laughs> that would be interesting if we did, though. I'm gonna mm -hmm. do a gauge check. Roger that. Where did you see the holotherium, Leela? Oh, and there's also a squat lobster up there. Oh, yeah. sure um, it was. It went out of the left side of the screen. Oh, I missed it. <clears throat> An interesting question. Does everyone get to meet Bob Ballard? <laughs> I will say no. I've never met him in person. I've been in the same room as Bob Ballard, and he video conference with my class last year. Oh, my cool. middle school students, so nice. that was neat. That's cool. But so I sort of met him, I guess. But I've I've talked to him, but I haven't been face to face with him at any point. He's been on a briefing that I've been on virtually. I I think he only comes on certain legs, correct? Yeah, I think uh, three of us have been on cruises with him. I have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Kyle. my yeah. internship okay. here. Kylie, just me. Maybe. Yeah. I don't uh, think I've seen them since then. Question for the pilots. Uh, how many pennies do we have in the bank? You have <laughs> pennies. You have some. You have okay. pennies. Yeah. Um, yeah. Would it be all right if we sat down and poked at a couple of rocks here? Oh, you want rocks? That type of penny. <laughs> well, that's a lot of pennies. <laughs> a sample penny? <laughs> <laughs> if this isn't a good time, we can, oh, no, we we can, can. look for another site. Okay. Um, it's to be on the fly. And if you see rocks that you like, we might have to go a little upstream. But we can poke at least here for now. Yes, yes. Let's poke. And okay. I will all stop on the gauge check. Yep. Yeah, because I'm trying to figure trying out to how... Go ahead and stop the ship there, Sulamat, please. Okay. Appreciate sure this is now. Okay. Hold position, please. Oh, yeah, and there's one of those sponges again. Mm -hmm. There was a request to uh, spell out the name of the jelly that we saw for the Thank folks you. at home. Thanks, Sulamat. A E N G I N O N A. Something like so that. That might be one to poke at. Oops, this geez. one. Oh, there's still some sponge in the slurp. Oh, that's what that is. Roger. Party sponge. <laughs> I think there's something orange sticking out of the slurp, too. Yeah, that's a piece of coral. Oh, no. don't it was, a, do it was a difficult then. sample collection okay. earlier. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure how stuck everything is to the bedrock here, so we're about to find out, folks. Jeez. Oh, so which one were you, you on? Gonna get on the we're gonna switch? check that one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because right. it's just a bunch are of Are the lasers ground. on? Lasers are not on. Ooh, lasers are not on. Yeah, that's, that's loose. You like that guy? Nice. Yeah, let's, like a let's grab size. that one. What is that, that maybe 15, 20 15 to 20 centimeters? That's, uh, big, that'll yeah. fit on the saw. Yeah. All right. Oh, <laughs> awesome, it's rock time. Jumpy hands. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the bender here. Oh, cool. Okay. I know I've said this before, but Val is, is really good at figuring out the geometry for making these rocks fit on the. Uh, I think that should make saw. it less jumpy. 
I've been cutting rocks for. What's going to make the rock less slippery? Oh my gosh. Oh, the grip force is at three. So oh, maybe that'll the do grip it. Force. Coming on 15 Halt. years of cutting rocks. Where's the time gone? Huh. Oh, yeah, they were collecting a very delicate sponge, so it's probably on pretty light. Nice. Where would you like it? That's going to go starboard. Let's do a little zoom edge. And Let's push we'll in on zoom. Go That's good. Or C. Looking good. Nice. That is a nice rock. Okay. Bell is happy. Come wide. And then they've got a little biology on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. By accident. Rog. I think we have time to stow this. And yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's do. Sample 90. Is that it? Yep. Sure, for nine sample nine. 90. Coming out. Roger. Yeah. Is there anything floating in starboard bio that I um, should know about? Yeah, there might be a sponge. There is a sponge in a uh, small in B. Ones? Yeah. Okay. yeah. This is going to go in a larger one, though? Um, if it could go in C, I mean, I think we're going to have to go to the other two open ones at some point in the back on this dive. C? Yeah. Roger. Uh, let's see. I don't see anything floating out yet. Perfect. Yeah, the sponge isn't a floater, but it is pretty neutrally buoyant, so it, it'll probably respond to thrusters. It's doing all right. All right. Sure. Let's see. I'm gonna index. Um. It's too big, and you want to uh, do a. Actually, yeah. Kylie, you want to bring yeah. it to the front again? I need to move. Yeah, Raj. Sorry, guys, we're going to stow this in yeah, a minute. Fine. I need to move the vehicle. Okay. Yeah, it looks pretty big, Kylie. We can put yeah, it in Raj. E. I concur. The spelling on Thank that you. once again is A E G I N O N A. Is that okay where it is, or yes. should I? Uh, I think you're good there. Make it different. Okay, Raj. So I have grip force on, and I have a grip lock on and uh, indexed. Roger that. I just want to get a little upslope. You got it. You got it. Should it, uh, yeah. Okay, Roger. Okay. Yep, we just need to uh, move Herc, uh, keep up with the ship, and uh, add Atlanta, and then we'll uh, we'll put the rock away. Doo -doo -doo. So Val, after you cut a rock, how flat is it polished? Um. We don't do any polishing aboard, uh, so it's basically the surface that we get is the freshly sawed surface. And depending on if I need to make a couple Can of cuts to get a slice, Roger. that may or may not be completely flat. Hey, there you are. There I am. Um, any polishing that we would do on those samples would uh, probably be for some microscopic slide uh, preparations. And uh, yeah, it, um, we'll either send those off or do those in-house if we need them. Um, I believe the Joides resolution uh, does uh, some in-house uh, slide preparation, though. So uh, we don't we don't have that capability here, but they use that for uh, uh, on onboard uh, drill core analyses, which is pretty cool. I actually have a couple of colleagues on the Joides right now. They just uh, went out to sea a couple of days ago. All right. Do we have any names for the manipulators or the slurp hose? Oh yeah, they all have names. So Craft Predator is the starboard right hand, and the Magnum is the left port hand. Another one of our little friends right there. Oh, you have a there good eye. All right, I want to sit down up here. Roger. Should I right in front of where this whole theory is would be a good spot? Interesting little fissure-ish yeah. feature that we're seeing. The rock's not a true volcanic fissure; it's just a gap. Collected a lot of sediment. Yeah, nice little place for some float. One thing I learned from Val as we were looking at the uh, rock slices was that the beautiful uh, olivine that you can find in. Um, kind of brought up with the eruptions and we see a lot in the black sand beaches on Hawaii Island. 
Okay. Uh, it ages out. It alters to like a clay. We're just yeah. pretty good there, I think. So it kind of looks okay. like this dark Great. one. Great. Got back around for a sample salvo. Roger. All right. And we're going to go for the outboard ones there, guys. Yeah. We'll do E. All right. That sounds groovy. E it is. Sorry. It's okay. Roger. the home for this guy. That was not going to fit and see. <laughs> well, it's huge. A big boy. Have fun with that. <laughs> yeah, it'll probably look a little bigger once we get it up. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's a been a common problem. <laughs> index. I just had to index so I can um, wrist rotate right to that. Nice. Looks good. Opening. It looks pretty similar so to some of the nice. ones we recovered yesterday. Okay. So yeah, still not too bad. They'll work. Slowly not beach ball. Get out of yeah. here. Yeah. Roger that. Roger. Nice. Right. nice sampling. Yeah, very nice. Thank you. I'm still amazed by some of those flatter rocks from one of our, some of our earliest dives that were pure, or almost pure manganese crust. Yeah. Nice. So, uh, what one of our onshore colleagues who works on ferromanganese crust was uh, mentioning to us is that. Um, Sometimes you get a piece of crust that falls off of something, and that serves as a nucleation point nice. for more manganese crust. Mm. Okay. Hold there. Uh -huh. Drop right there. there. So it's like double crust. Um, yeah. Roger that. Roger. So yeah, a mineral called uh, olivine is a very common uh, phase that you see crystallizing out in lavas like this. Um, it's a, uh, in these lavas, it's a magnesium-rich silicate. And it's uh, usually this beautiful uh, green color. So if you've ever heard of peridot, or peridot, however you pronounce the uh, uh, jewel name, um, that's olivine. And uh, it, olivine is actually not chemically stable. Um, in oceanic or like surficial conditions on Earth. It's stable at uh, higher temperatures and pressures uh, in the crust and mantle system. So it does eventually chemically break down. And when it does that in uh, seawater... All right, what are we looking at? We're still continuing on the 015? Zero, uh, zero, zero, 005. Zero, zero, 005, Raj. I'll let them get moving again, and then we'll finish that. OK. Yeah. Raj, this is Nav. Zero, zero, 005, 30 meters. That's correct. All right, so we're getting moving again. Um, yeah, so uh, the olivine that we see in these rocks, uh, it's it's not stable in this uh, seawater environment. And so over time, it does eventually slowly uh, break down. And uh, it ends up being converted into hey, yes. Uh, it ends up being converted into this uh, bright red-orange clay, uh, clay-like material that we call itingsite. And uh, yeah, it's uh, what I've seen in the rocks so far, all of the olivines have been completely replaced by this itingsite. So we know that these rocks are a little bit older, and that's also an indicator that uh, there's some uh, alteration within the rock that we need to uh, deal with in the geochemical labs in order to get um, the most representative mantle signature out of these that we can. But uh, interestingly enough, the clinopyroxenes that sometimes show up in these rocks, those are much uh, harder to break down and uh, break down much more slowly in many cases. So um, when we cut open the rocks, we actually find if there's clinopyroxene present, which we haven't seen a whole lot of so far, um, that usually tends to look uh, like it's in pretty good shape. Sometimes it can... Uh, Sometimes there's a little bit of clay mixed in with those, though, and they've, they've started to alter to a different kind of clay than what the olivines do.
That sea star was predating that coral, but it looked like it was hanging on to like the last little tip of the branch. It's always impressive how they're not like toppling over. Those yeah. two feet are so strong. Like they're tiny little filaments, but they just use that water pressure to suck right onto stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited, Val, in a couple of years to hear kind of the results of all of this stuff, having seen you cut kind of the initial look or kind of take the initial look at these cuts we've been making. Yeah, for sure. I'm looking forward to it as well. There's another Holotherian. They're all over way up here. I'm kind of, well, I guess there's a decent amount of sediment in the cracks and stuff. Yeah, there's a little bit. Substrate looks pretty good, though. For those back. of you just joining us, we are uh, about five and a half hours into a 24-hour dive. We are in uh, the Pacific Ocean on Mercury Seamount, which is on the, the north side of the Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument. Roughly a thousand dollars. A thousand dollars. He becomes a, a thousand unit of measurement. miles away from where we started our expedition. We traveled mm -hmm. quite a ways. More than a thousand dollars. More than a thousand dollars. Yeah. So, s something that I, I don't know if a lot of folks are aware of, but in addition to being a marine national monument, uh, Papahanao Mokuakea Marine National Monument was inscribed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2010, mm -hmm. not just for its uh, the natural significance, but also the cultural significance. And that's really rare to, to, to achieve that um, inscription. Uh, this is actually, I believe, the only dual um, World Heritage Site in the United States. This is a very special place. It definitely is. And nearly the largest protected place in the world. Although, uh, right after we became the uh, then President Obama expanded our boundary out to what it is now, um, the uh, Ross Sea oh. was protected through an agreement of, of multiple countries. I didn't uh, realize so that is that. slightly, slightly yeah. bigger. Rossi, but I think that has a, a timeline on it. I don't think it's uh, into perpetuity. Oh, interesting. I know the protections on land, and that's in Antarctica, the Ross Sea, right? Yeah. Most of the protections on yep, land there sure. are up for renegotiation in 2041, I believe, in the early really? 2040s. That's yeah, because right. they, they set up those uh, agreements in the 60s when that seemed like it was a long way away. <laughs> Yeah, and then they added to it just right after 2016, I think it was late 2016 or probably early 2017. Yeah. Three piece? Because our expanded boundary was us. created yeah. in 2016. <laughs> Over a million and a half square Fish kilometers. Fish looks shy here, normally either to go from the back or they don't like to be in the spotlight. I guess not. <laughs> And just given how alive the seamounts are, uh, these old seamounts that don't erupt anymore are just incredible uh, hosts for life. We need yes, to please. keep that intact as much as we can. Bridge, this is Nav. Another move, same step. Thank you. Well, we had a viewer ask um, if they've seen serpentine olivine on hills in the San Francisco Bay Area. Did that originate underwater? Um, which part of California again? San Francisco Bay. Uh, possibly, yeah. There's a big metamorphic uh, complex over in that region, and there are also some uh, ophiolites here and there along the west coast, which are bits of mantle that were scraped onto uh, the continental crust during the initiation of uh, oceanic and continental collision zones, uh, subduction zones. So it's very likely that yes, that was um, it. Either it either came from somewhere uh, deeper in the earth, or uh, came from the uh, the sea floor. So um, serpentinized mantle is something you see, uh, or serpentinized olivine, excuse me, is something you see pretty commonly in uh, some ophiolites. 
What do you think that color or that is doing there? That red? It's like a discolored yeah, it's kind of an orange. Probably just octocorals, or, I mean, mushroom corals, possibly. Did you guys want to look at it? It's in a weird spot. Uh, yeah. Don't do anything you don't feel good about. Maybe a quick no. zoom. We don't have to maneuver too deep or anything. Yeah. Go ahead and push that in there, baby. It's like a coral skeleton. That's good. Uh, with a mushroom, mushroom, mushroom coral. Mushroom yeah. corals, okay. Yeah. And that's the tahinodis on the left again. All right, go away, please. Viewer wants to know what the fish in an area like this would have to eat. Crustaceans. Yeah. yeah. They're probably not eating coral or sponges. So the invertebrates, or I guess those are invertebrates too, but the moving invertebrates. Wow, that's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. so yeah, we haven't seen any big fish that I've been aware of on this dive, but I, uh, I've missed a few sections of it as I was getting ready uh, to come on, uh, come on ship. Um, there is one we have seen behind some the vehicles. Ah, okay. Yeah, we did. We have seen some fish on on our dives here and there. So they are down here, and yeah, I guess crustaceans seems. Go ahead and push on in there a bit, please. That's like great. that one. <laughs> you know what we haven't been seeing a lot of that we saw a lot of yesterday is cup corals. Yeah, true. That's, true. True. that's a huge difference from yesterday. Okay, partial wide, please. And those, I, I want to see more of that's those good. just carpets of zoanthids. Yeah. That was amazing. And we're only a few hours uh, away from our last dive site, too. Okay, cool wide, please. So again, it's that, it's that extreme diversity from seamount to seamount, these little loci of ecosystems. They all have their unique balances. Mm. And here we go on to a... What's our oxygen looking like? Still the same, 60-ish. Yeah, very slowly coming down. Yeah, we're gonna climb a bit though. So, so we'll we can increase to Definitely. five zero meter steps. It's not as dramatic as expected. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Those chrysogorgias are dramatic. Some interesting whips. There were whip bamboo earlier, but some of this almost looks like from nodes. You're hey, not seeing Lila? the uh, the nodes. Yeah. How many rock samples do we currently have? Three. Three. Or actually, there might be I think one in this. I think two. 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 Did it? Two. No. Got more than two. Kylie, I want to see how many plates we have. We fl we're flying a bit heavy. Uh, oh no, you're right, two. One of those is a sponge, two. Yeah, cause we still uh, got all of them, don't we? Yeah, if we drop one of those guys over here. Okay. Make me feel happier. Yeah, Dwight picked up a rock right at the beginning of the dive and uh, then they, uh, they spent a lot of time with that sponge too. Yeah. Yeah. I missed the rock. What did it? What kind of? Rock? I missed it too. Oh. Apparently, just mm. just by a couple of minutes. So. Rock for Val. Smaller, more rough looking. About seven by four centimeters. Smaller. Excellent. <laughs> Smaller <laughs> and. <laughs> and that's why we take notes. Wait on comms. Yeah. Roger that. We're almost yeah. halfway to waypoint two. Get rid of that. A distance of. Thirteen hundred meters between those two, so it's a long step. It's a long one. Yeah. Long step for a long dive. Yeah. So what we're doing right now is dropping mm -hmm. uh, one of our ballast plates because we've taken on some more weight. We want it to be easier to stay close to neutrally buoyant. Okay. All right. I've got comms. Roger that. Going in. I'm on your kill switch. Roger. Thank you. These plates are made to degrade over time. They're made of iron, which will turn to rust and disintegrate. And there's a... I don't want the scoop. A rope on there as I well. I don't want the slurp, Raj. Another question from our viewers. Nice. If they don't have brains, oh, Jesus. Uh, Jesus. do sponges okay. have nerves? And what about corals? Nice. Sponges are probably the most primitive invertebrates. They do not have nerves. Um, Corals, no, also. Uh, they're also nice. cnidarians, like 
jellyfish and uh, and tina or not tina forest jellyfish and hydrozoans. Very nice. Lovely. Okay. Sometimes uh, things that are in the same Thank you much. No phylum, problem. which is a pretty high Thanks group, can look that. pretty different, but there are similarities <laughs> between them if yes. you know what to look for. <laughs> corals, for example, they have those polyps. Would make them move. And you can. Yeah. Price this is enough. Uh, another move 50 meters, 5 zero meters on bearing zero, zero 005. You can think about uh, polyps as sort of like a, an upside down version of a jellyfish. You know, like the tentacles are reversed. Um, and like I was saying earlier in hydrozoans, you actually see both of those life forms. You see the polyp form and you see the medusa form, which is like the jellyfish form. Um, and actually, I think there, that, that whole phylum, Nideria, might sometimes have like sort of diffuse nervous systems where they have concentrations of nerve cells um, but it's not quite like a brain or anything. So it's not like any sort of centralized... No, no yeah. centralized nervous system. That's really interesting. They're only organized, I think, at the tissue level, not mm -hmm. the organ level. Another small spongy. Yeah. Just looks like a little balloon on a string. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So just a reminder to our educators out there, or really anybody who likes this just to be part of this exploration, there is a, a new kind of partner website called deepoceaneducation.org. And uh, there you can create your own account and curate your own uh, lessons or video shorts uh, or kind of choose by a topic. Uh, it's really set up to make it really easier for you to um, engage your students uh, with this, and you can even share your curated um, uh, pieces or your, your curated groups to with colleagues or with your students or with your friends if you want to do it on your own. Val, is this speed appropriate for you guys? Or do you want to go a little faster? Um, this is fine with me. This looks, this looks perfect. OK, roger that. Look at those little glowies on that sponge. Oh, right and the there. sponge at the top yeah, center. Some say they're white barnacles. Or I was probably just reflecting. Yeah. Yeah. Poor, sad looking. I think it's my here. favorite sponge. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're pretty really wild looking. It's good. Yeah. yeah it just is. Uh, they do look sort of barnacle-y, like ones that we pulled up the other day. All right. Can you come a little wide there, please? I want How to get did we get some shot. barnacles recently? Um, there was one on one of your rocks, I think. Oh, cool. They're the ones that we recovered yesterday. I've only just started processing those. So I was getting a bunch of others uh, from previous dives, uh, moved off of the workbench and uh, ready for stowage. So Sweet. We're only just getting going on, on those. So I'm still playing a little catch up. Alright. Go ahead and push on in there again, please. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Oh. Hey. <laughs> I moved off my little perch a little bit there. Excuse me. No worries. Oh, hi. <laughs> I'm partial wide, please. That's good. Any verdict? Uh, I think barnacles. Rad, rad. Okay, for white, please. Maltheria Flemingi. There's a question about the green laser dots. Um, 10 centimeters apart. They are 10 centimeters <laughs> apart, exactly. Bingo. <laughs> <laughs> they help us to measure things at different distances, which is especially useful because we only have single camera views, so we don't have binocular vision looking at the stuff. That'd be very interesting if we had binocular vision. Probably do some interesting reconstructions that way. Oh, 
question about how the marine organisms down here are affected by the pressure, especially when they're taken back up into the ship. Mm. They are more affected by the temperature changes, although the bio boxes keep pretty much constant temperature. Um, the, the water is definitely really cold when we reach in there and get them out. Um, but as far as the pressure change, while there might be um, like physiological, uh, they might be stressed out by that. Um, and that's something that you could tell if you looked at whatever proteins they were encoding um, or proteins they were producing. Uh, in terms of the way they look, they don't come up um, they don't come up exploded or anything because they don't have gas filled chambers and it's the gas that would be expanding as they came up and so uh, all the invertebrates that we're seeing here have water filled cavities if anything um, or something like water um, yeah so they don't uh, the way in the way they look they don't they don't look too different when they come up except that sometimes the anemones, for example, won't be all beautiful, beautiful and, and flowy. They'll be kind of in their stressed position, more scrunched up. But sometimes the sea stars are even like crawling on the side of the bio box. And a comment that if we had a stereo camera, we could wear a VR headset to yeah. yeah, there's there's some experimentation with that. I know in 2018 on the leg of the expedition I was on, uh, Dr. Alan Adams at MIT Ocean Lab was, was playing around with that, actually. So I don't know if you guys, Sam or Kylie, have you heard of anything in that going that direction? All good? Well, the things that, like, K2 does with the Norbit, I feel like could translate into oh. um, VR stuff. And I think he's working on something with um, someone that is in, like, based out of Florida, Casey Sapp, that does, like, VR virtual um, underwater deep sea stuff. Um, and then I know, like, some, like, ROV platforms, like, have researched the ability to pilot with a VR headset, but mm. that the shipboard seasickness <laughs> with a VR headset on uh -huh. is uh, bleh, gross. I uh, was wondering about that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, because um, the Norbit that we've had on for other, it's a sensor that goes on Hercules that we've had for other uh, expeditions, um, can do like photogrammetry photogrammetry. Oh, okay. Really? Um, That's interesting. Yeah, and it collects so many um, data points also, so it's like, it's, it's really interesting technology. Um, yeah, so it's definitely like, I feel like the the ability is um, right, right around the corner for like making it and producing it and cool. using it. Yeah, because I was, kind of, uh, with regard to just the, the motion issue, um, it seems it seems like that would be kind of kind of complicated to uh, Go push on in there a bit, please. Uh, to coordinate camera movements okay. with uh, what you would want to do while wearing a VR headset. So it's like you know, would, would there be any option for like tying the uh, uh, tying the right. camera movement to uh, the movement of uh, you know where the direction the pilot wants to look in, um, or is that just too complicated? I believe it's Could complicated, but. Any problem is just like Pretty this is enough. The solution is just dependent on time, right? Yeah. Like we'll figure it out eventually. Same step, please. Cause yeah, with the I've I've never really used a VR headset, but I I know that just instinctively wearing one of those, I'd want to go look around, mm -hmm. and uh, the way that uh, we operate. Uh, uh, the Herc camera here, um, that's that's not something that uh, would be easily done because, uh, yeah, we have pilots uh, uh, flying the ROV and then we have a separate uh, video engineer who's helping with the camera. 
Hmm. What would be wild is if you had some kind of a 360 camera and everyone could be having VR headsets on and we could all look where we wanted to look so the pilots could be looking sort of more straight ahead, ahead and focusing on where they need to drive and and in back row could be like looking around a bit more. Although then it would get confusing and be like, what's that thing over there? And you'd yeah. be like, over where? <laughs> and then we would telestrate with our brainwaves. That's a really interesting <laughs> idea though. I wonder, you could probably just superimpose like a 360 degree line around it with little marks and people say, what's that, you know, a, you know, 240 or something. Yeah, oh, that's, that's, true. That's, true. that's true. That integration with a 360 camera is really interesting. It's a yeah. nice idea. Um, the uh, marine imaging technologies on Cape Cod has a 360. Isn't exactly a ROV. It's more of like a robot on a stick, <laughs> more than it is like on a tether. In, in the sense that, like, it doesn't have thrusters, but it goes down with a diver, and oh, it cool. has like eight cameras around a circumference, and then one above and one below, and it time stitches them all together. Oh, um, oh cool! In That's post, um, and. Um, so that that is a 360 system, um, but more for shallow waters because uh, it's like I said, operated by a diver. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. That's Are actually becoming the the preferred procedure for shallow water coral monitoring. Really? Is doing photogrammetry st structure for motion photogrammetry? Yeah. Oh, cool. There are a lot of. I think there's even a. 360 GoPro situation now. There are multiple cameras yeah. coming out now that have, you know, maybe like two two cameras that can look see 180 degrees opposite right. yes. each other. Yep, exactly. Yeah. There are. Yeah. I filmed uh, most of my thesis film with a GoPro Fusion and a GoPro Max, which are the the two GoPro uh, 360 cams. Oh, mm -hmm. cool. They're uh, they're pretty easy. They're they're nifty little cameras. And the editing and software is getting better too. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, you can pretty much do whatever you want with, um, I mean, you can make a pretty passable one in Premiere, which is amazing, and then After Effects, which is um, a little more intense, but you can do basically anything you can think of in that. It's still a little glitchy, but, but you can get it done. Nice. Yeah, technology is progressing rapidly. Hard to keep track of, uh, you know... A lot of these advancements. Yeah. I know. Yeah, I just love it. So much going on. Yeah, me too. That's those, why I got uh, into this. Sorry, go ahead, Matt. Those two programs are like the industry standard yeah. editors. Like just five or six years ago, you had to get all this specialized uh, software and everything to stitch your um, film, and then half the time it didn't work. Uh, so the fact that <laughs> the, just the mainstream software that everyone has now has settings for that is is a pretty big advance. Totally. One of our viewers says they were controlling the arm remotely with a VR headset last tech demo oh. on Nautilus. Because they, they were doing it from shore, I think. NUI robot. Nui. Oh, Nui, near and under ice. Yeah. I think they were doing that from shore in Woods Hole. The only other barrier I can think of other than, like, the ones that we've already mentioned, uh, including seasickness, is that, like, if you wanted to have the shoreside scientists watching in 360 and, and pointing out different angles to look at, um, that's, it's just exponentially more uh, information to stream. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, true. That's cause, true. Because, like, uh, this we're recording in, like, you know, just under 2K, basically, so 1080p, uh, but um, the minimum... There. It's either Balsamo or that Advina. It's that Advina, I think. It, okay. it should have two alien eyes instead of the big opening. Oh, okay, Pikachu. that's the difference with the two <laughs> alien <laughs> eyes. So yeah. maybe most of the ETs we saw last time were Advina then. <laughs> Sorry, Rhett, we interrupted you. Oh, no worries. This Actually, is much more interesting. Do you want to go ahead and <laughs> I thought, do the, I thought both things were interesting. Piece? Yeah, that's good. You can always tell if they're an ET sponge if they eat Reese's Pieces. If they Ooh, what? Good point. If what? If they eat Reese's Pieces. <laughs> eat Reese's Pieces, right, yeah. And that was the movie where he left the trail. Yeah, that's right. Huh. They commercialized the heck out of that. Oh, they, they did. I haven't actually watched E.T. in a really long time. Me and either. I bet it would be pretty surprising how bad the special effects were. All right, full white, please. Because, you know, I didn't think about them as being that bad at the time. Uh, the thing is, the, well, pre-CGI... Uh, any anything that involves like practical effects tends to hold up really well, really? Unless, unless it's like stop motion. Um, 
Yeah, I stop love motion. Stop motion I feel like Me it's too. but but the, the you know like the the bicycle in the sky sort of thing. Like it's just gonna. <laughs> yeah. <I'm laughs> Kylie, are you a fan of Wallace and Gromit? I haven't Wallace seen it. Wallace and Gromit. Oh, oh there's so much fun. I saw Kubo and the Two and Strings. <laughs> I like I like I like the effort that gets made for that for stop motion stuff. Mm -hmm. That's some real artistry there. Yeah, yeah total Play dedication. Stuff. But anyway, uh, passable 360 <laughs> <laughs> definition is basically like again, 6K, which is three times what we're filming in. Come a little wide. Okay. Yeah, I remember it being a big deal on Falcor uh, when they when they had a uh, 4K camera for the uh, for the science camera. Right, we light, had please. one last cruise on on here. On okay. Earth. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't sure if we were in 4K or not, but you've answered my question on that. So as we get kind of a bigger network of satellites, that becomes a little more possible. Yeah. Also, the thing about like deep sea cameras is like the, the, you can, you know, like Rhett's saying, like you can use the like GoPro or like a Insta360, um, but you then you become like your other constraints are um, like data management and um, power, power and the pressure housing um, mm -hmm. and like the dome, um, like special domes for uh, deep sea um, use. Yeah, yeah. And with 360, you have a lot of diffraction issues with the dome housing that you use. Um, so it might mess up the angles that your cameras are receiving yeah, things exactly. relative to one another and you no longer are in 360. Uh, you, so oh, it's just, it like all, has all these complicated considerations. Mm -hmm. Sounds like barf cam for everybody at that point. <laughs> <laughs> barf cam. Yeah. Don't, don't sign me up on that one. I already get seasick yeah. easy. Oh. <laughs> What is that? Is that an anemone? Yeah. No, that can't be. Sort of looks red thing. Yeah. yeah. yeah I don't know. Now, now the closer we get, the weirder it looks. Yeah, right. I think it's is a, a black coral. Is that bathopathies? Oh, oh, it oh. might be bathopathies. I think it's a suction disc. Has oh, a no. suction disc on the bottom, right? Yeah. It's one of those. Oh, magnets. Jessica. Good. This eye. is the stuff <laughs> I love. Very good, very good eye. Oh, go ahead and oh, oh, it's okay. A little bit of mud in front of the coral there. We're gonna set sit right almost. Penatulacea? Is it a weird C pen? Yeah, I that was, let's look that up, but that sounds closer. Yeah, yeah Chris Chris is off the chat temporarily, but um, We got it, we got it. Yeah. yeah. It looks sort of like penatulacea. I think we still have a Sako, so we just once we get a zoom we will get it. Alright, go ahead and start your zoom there. It's not the best shot for oh, you. Wow. Guys. Oh yeah. Yeah, she's waiting for our zoom too. <laughs> yeah, she's ready. She's ready. Thanks. Bruce, this is enough. Another move, same step. I got a penatula, I think. Wow! Look at that. Oh yeah, here. So what group is Patella. that? Yeah, it's a C pen. That's good. But it's an a penatulid, I think, in Patella and Flada would be the species potentially. And, a, right, and it has been seen. If, if it is that one, it's been seen in the northwestern Hawaiian Islands before. A rock pen is what Asako is calling it. Cool. They have a really cool modified peduncle. I remember these things. They use like a hydrostatic little. I don't, I don't know the right word for this anymore. Never mind. Makes a little suction disc is all I know. <laughs> Go away, please. Nice spot on that. Yeah, thanks. Well, good job, Jess, for seeing the base. I didn't see that. Yeah. They're so cool. They are. Yeah, sea pen is a very appropriate name for those. They look like, uh, like an old am. quill pen sitting in an inkwell. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Can you guys think of something that would be a C pencil, or is it just <laughs> a giant? Hook. Depends on if it has an eraser. We just passed another whole period. Not that it. Nothing new. It is big. How did that one C pen decide to settle here? With, you know, like that must have traveled pretty far. Didn't even yeah. look like it had a lot of sediment. No. I don't know if this is the case anymore, but that reminds me of for a while there was uh, one tree on the continent of Antarctica. Hmm. <laughs> this is the most isolated tree on Earth. Did a human put it there? Uh, supposedly, no. Interesting. So it really? found its way there. It was on, um, I'm blanking on the name of the big peninsula that gets close to Palmer? South America. Uh, sure. <laughs> the, it was on. It was at a point that was close to South America, relatively speaking, but... Okay. Yeah, maybe it somehow, I don't know, got from the South Georgia Islands to Palmer. Yeah. What kind of tree was it? You know, I don't remember. We should go look that up. Yeah. I bet you can. Only We tree have the Google. On Antarctica. Sometimes I just stop and no. reflect <laughs> on how much technology has changed in my lifetime. Yeah. We tease our parents about the uh, rotary phones, but I had that as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> and email w was a thing when I was in college. Yeah. We were trying with uh, Annabelle to, s to see what difference like even four years makes, because she's just, I think, four or three years younger than I am. And um, it's it's kind of wild how just just those couple years are the difference between knowing what a floppy disk is or like having used a cassette tape. Or, or why our save icons look like they do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's been changing so fast. It's a lot of fun. Somebody thought they saw it. China cops, possibly, that we just passed over. No. What? No I didn't one said uh, anything. I didn't see it. I, I didn't see I'm anything. Heteropolypus. <laughs> I'm looking up trees in Antarctica. <laughs> <laughs> Tr tree in Antarctica. Was, it, was the China cops kind of a purplish color? I saw something on the left side that we passed. I just didn't get a good look at. Maybe they can write us in and say. China cops are usually like very kind of reddish. Orangey. Yeah, most of them. I, saw, I was looking in the ID guy. There are some that are more purple. Oh. I just didn't see any pink purpley pinks. Those are definitely not Antarctic trees. <laughs> palm trees coming in. <laughs> there are plenty of fossil Good. forests, but I'm not coming up with that one quite yet. I'm sure it'll turn up. So we have a question about what we're looking for. <laughs> um, we are looking for a, a number of things. Uh, one of our top priorities is collection of rock samples. One set for uh, geological study, one for biological study. We are also going to be taking water samples periodically uh, as we progress up this seamount. And those are going to go to several different places. One reason is um, for the bacterial analysis that um, our microbiologist on board is working on. And another one is for eDNA, looking for the environmental DNA that's floating around in the water column. And the last thing we're looking for are uh, key, you know, rare or not seen before species of organisms down here. We have scientists on shore that have given us a, a wish list and they're giving us advice over the science chat. I'm finding surprisingly little info about a tree recently growing in Antarctica, but uh, I am seeing some press releases about research where geologists have uh, uh, looked at fossil trees, and those in include things like palm trees, which would date back to when Antarctica was part of Gondwana land. And uh, that, uh, that supercontinent cycle uh, uh, was uh, during a pretty warm climate. So uh, yeah, Antarctica uh, back in the past used to be uh, quite balmy from the looks of it. Honestly, cooler. <laughs> it was at a I'm really different in latitude, tree. too, right? Yeah. Mm. I wonder, well. But, uh, there, yeah, there wasn't always an ice cap there, either. I think uh, the, the South Pole, for a while, if I'm remembering correctly, did have some uh, 
you know, when land was uh, at the South Pole, there, there were some deserts and stuff, too. So it has a lot to do with, um, uh, you know, the, the, the climate uh, is also responsive to oceanic currents. And uh, that's part of the reason that Antarctica is as cold as it is, is we have uh, the Drake Passage, which is the circumpolar oceanic current that just goes around and around and around Antarctica and in some ways kind of isolates it uh, climatologically. And may also have some controls on some climate cycles uh, known as Milankovic cycles or Milankovic. Well, keeping my eyes out, there's a lot of shadowing under the rocks that yeah. are easy to mistake for it, but maybe our viewers saw it. I wish we could find it. Because they are always cool to see. And a question about pressure at this depth. Um, we're at just over 2,000 meters. And for every 10 meters that we descend from the surface, we add one atmosphere. So basically add one uh, amount of what we consider normal pressure at sea level. So 10 meters down, you're double the pressure. 20 meters down, you're triple the pressure, and so on. So we're about... 200 times the typical pressure that we would experience on Earth um, at sea level. We are finally just barely under 60 uh, micromole per liter oxygen, so we are slowly, slowly coming down as so we move up the up the slope here. Yeah, looking at the map, it looks like we're entering into some flatter contours. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so we're uh, Another heading up toward waypoint two. Once we oh, get there, we have to wait to catch up. Oh, you can go. Ahead. I mean, I'm I'm right underneath. Okay. So. Uh, but Val, did you want a rock sample since the oxygen concentration is low? Is that um, the idea? We're gonna try to push it a little bit lower. Beth uh, is on the lookout for something uh, around the uh, the 50 micromole uh, concentration. Roger that. Okay. Yeah. So we'll we'll keep so going. And we've only gone down a couple, huh? So not here, it's right? Been, yeah, we've been ahead. descending pretty slowly. So we're at, uh, this is Nav. What's that? A fish? Right yeah, a fish. Good eye. Down at the bottom. Uh, another uh, move, same step. Waltheria. Doesn't want to be a mensch today. No, no. See ya. Oh. Look at that. I think you heard you. Yeah. Uh, I think Corey it's a Mercurid. I think I saw that fin yeah. oh, kind of along the top. Kind of hard to see, though. Yeah, the water looks a lot clearer in this section than it did when we first started. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. Sure thing. scientists ashore is uh, commenting on just the, the, num the, the weight of the, uh, the rock sample uh, uh, load that we've picked up so far. <laughs> Almost 92 kilograms through our first four dives. Um, so we've got a pretty good uh, uh, geological sampling going. More of that to come. Yeah, you must have to set aside a bit of a shipping fund. So in 2013, I was on a five-week uh, geology-specific dredging cruise, and um, we basically filled a small uh, a small container when we got to Fiji. And, that, and 
that all went to the archive. And we just had like a handful of little boxes that went off to uh, each university for mm -hmm. subsamples. That's probably more economical, isn't it? Getting one of those little mini pods. It was bigger than a mini pod. <laughs> it was it was like a half size container, if oh, I remember wow. correctly. Yeah. It was a lot of rocks. Yeah. We had a couple of bags come up late in the cruise that were like 800, 900 pounds. It, it was like right at the end of the cruise, everybody's tired, and just this, these full bags would come on deck. Like <laughs> the poor undergrads who were helping us process <laughs> things were just like, we don't want to do this. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I, I completely agreed with them. We but we just had to get it knocked out and couldn't do a partial zoom. Oh, it was a standard please. shipping container. So one of our uh, colleagues in the onshore portal, uh, he was on the same cruise that I'm talking about. Which uh, thing do you want me to focus on? This okay, so that was right a full-size container. I couldn't remember that, Kevin. Cry know. Crinoids on a dead sponge Thank walk you. area, probably. Mm -hmm. Squat lobster. Yeah. Yeah. Those pretty bottle brush. Yeah. All the squat lobster. Cry right here, squat lobster. I think of that B-52 song. You know that sediment in the back oh, or a dead... Something. Looks like a dead something. Dead Raj. something, yeah. I was thinking, um, Haltharian excrement. Uh, <laughs> they're, like a, <laughs> they're very distinctive little pellets. <laughs> or at least the shallow water ones are, so. Yeah, or like, like just, you know, like the poop emoji? Exactly like, like the little <laughs> swirly shape. It totally is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> little what? The swirly shape of the poop emoji? I don't know, emoji? the first part? Poop emoji. Oh. <laughs> I thought it was an actual species. Oh, yeah, the poop emoji species. Poop emoji. Poop emoji. Poop emoji. Emoji. I heard like pupilla. I was like, wow, that's a new one. I haven't heard that one before. So, now what do we see in here? This looks like more nodule It looks a little bit like a nodule field. Yeah. Probably consolidated, right? Yeah. Hard to say, but probably, yeah. So how does that You want to zoom on it, Third and Val? Yeah, let's get a quick zoom on that. Oh, I can sit down here quick. So Christopher, you were saying something about rewriting the lyrics from rock lobster to squat lobster? Yeah, I think that you needs really to be should. done. You really should. That's a good <laughs> idea. Let's do it. Another holothurian friend. Uh -huh. So look like sea All right, go ahead and push on in there, please. Oh, nope, those are definitely not consolidated. I just saw the ROV uh, displace a couple. Oh, really? Do we want to scoop some nodules? Um, I don't know. So would be, has Beth mentioned nodule desires? I, I, um. <laughs> we are still using the Mini Cooper normalization for the rocks. All right, full wide there, please. I'm going to keep moving unless you guys want anything from here. Um, we can keep moving. Reg. Leela, do we have any more kind of sheer cliff-like edges coming up, or are we kind of staying up on the... Here's hot pack some months zooming out on it. Um, I think we're choosing to go over the flatter portions toward waypoint two, but... Then it looks like there's some exciting sheer cliff between waypoint two and waypoint three that could be really cool to check oh, out. Oh yeah, I definitely want to check that out. I think um, I think once we hit maybe mm, that contour, yeah, yeah, I think we I think we may want to skirt the uh, oh, the edge of that yeah, on the way up. Sure. I think that would be a really good survey track. Yeah, cool. let's do it. Yeah, Kevin is telling us. Kevin is telling is. us that. Uh, on that old cruise, we picked up uh, 2,329 kilograms of rocks, uh, which uh, for that wow. cruise, we used a, uh, a, a unit um, of Mini Coopers. <laughs> it's about 3.6 Mini Coopers. I love that. For this cruise, I am threatening to use uh, the unit stone. So we have no, 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 how no, many no. stones of rocks? No, 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 no. <laughs> It's not going to be an official number. Which Don't stone? Worry. Are you going to use the like British stone? Or isn't there, there are multiple stones? There are multiple there's like stones. There's like the 12-pound stone. And there's also like, like, there's a, like 18 yeah. or something. <laughs> Got to pick your stones wisely. I often count money in coffees. 
money and coffee. Yeah, like if somebody gives you like a ten dollar thing, I'm like, that's like three coffees. Yeah, right. That's <laughs> one thing to use. I don't think I can translate rocks to uh, coffees easily. Yeah, they're, they're just priceless, you know. <laughs> no, that's going to involve a lot of dimensional analysis, and I'm a little rusty at that. <laughs> Did you see what the species that Ryan was talking about in science chat? Ryan, more Penicillacea. Yeah, those were the sea pens that were settled on that when we settled by the nodules. Oh. Is that a sponge right there? Yeah, that looks like it. Oh yeah, now I see it better. It's amazing it's just how Another different move. you... Keep moving? Yep. Keep yep. Bridge, this is not. Another move, same step, please. Uh, Suleiman, I think at about 100 meters, we'll ask for a slight change in direction. Okay, uh, to more to the east? Yes, yeah, does it, uh, try following the, the edge of this uh, cliff. So we can uh, look here. down the slope. Roger that. Back over here, somewhere. Um, did you want to, where, where did you want to skirt over? Uh, I think once we hit this kind of plateau area, um, then Here we start like 200 meters? Um, about half that distance. Half that, okay, yeah. so yeah. So about, about where, you're, uh, yeah, you're right, right there, yeah. That's where we'll start okay. diverting east. Yeah, so yes, I'm please. Pretty this is nav, yes, please, proceed. Zero, zero, five. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with you. Uh, yeah. This bathymetry is starting to get really interesting over here. I think that was um, Suleiman from our current position, about 100 to 150 meters north. Yep. Um, uh, from our current from position. From our current position, yeah. yeah. I see, okay. So when we get over here. Yeah, somewhere around there, then start moving start. that Perfect. way. Exactly. Okay. Sorry about that. Sorry about what? Uh, nothing. The snore. <laughs> <laughs> don't apologize for if that. You don't remember. I've got nothing to apologize for. <laughs> <laughs> you have nothing to apologize for. It's all good. I was like w w one inch away from hitting the mute, but it just came out. <laughs> quick. Sometimes it does. <laughs> <laughs> it was oh, funny. So I'm seeing a smattering of uh, mushroom corals and then some kind of red stalk. Is that a sponge or a coral that we're seeing? Sea pens. Sea pens, okay. So I was completely wrong. <laughs> All good. No, you weren't completely wrong. Sea pens are similar to coral. Gotcha, okay. Yeah, I honestly have no idea what they actually were. They're, they're octocorals. Okay. Yeah, this is a pretty abrupt change uh, as we got into this nodule field here. Yeah, Chris Chris Kelly was telling us earlier that um, the corals don't really like rubbly places. They like kind of more in-place substrate. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense that we would be seeing a change in uh, the fauna around here. The sea pens, you can see, like, they'll be just growing out of the sand sometimes. Okay. So, yeah. Right, you want to push They're out not oh, the piece? I see what you mean there. Thank you. There's been a lot of them, kind of a whole scattered yeah, field of them. Yeah, over all yeah. here. It's interesting. I'm not seeing much marine snow on uh, Herc view. Oh. Come full wide, please. Well, I definitely oh, see it flowing above at Atlanta view. Do you want me to go past the... Uh, corner her there? Or? Oh yeah, I'll square up first. Do we have a scoop on right now? We have we two. Do. For those of you just joining us, we are at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean at about 2,000 meters depth, working our way up the southern ridge this of over Mercury Seamount. Oh, is that a big star? Yeah, yeah same one we collected oh, the other a big day. Big star. Yeah. Slime star. 
Can you throw the lasers on that real quick? The lasers are on. Oh, they're on. Yeah. It's so big, I couldn't even compare. <laughs> <laughs> but That's you can get the lasers on them, though. Okay. There you go. More I think that is foot. bigger than the one we collected. Yeah, it definitely is. So that's a slime star, is that right? Actually, it's sort. Yeah, it is the same star. It's Maybe. actually sort of similar to the one we collected. Bigger, but yeah, that really shows you how small those sea pens are. Yeah, yeah. a lot smaller than I thought. Was is that about twenty centimeters? Yeah, at its widest. All right, yeah. go ahead and push on in there a bit, please. That's good. So they call it a slime star. Is it really slimy, or Pro this is enough? Yeah, it is. It's got. A, it's pretty mutacy when it comes up. Yeah. Oh, stand by. I think it's a, are we this facing difficulties in uh, maintaining as we are drifted? Oh. Okay. Roger that. Thank you. Yep. So it should be coming back. Good eye. Um, since it sounds like we drifted a little, little one, we'll have to, we'll have maybe a bit of time Pull as the please. ship regains ROV would now be an okay time for nodule sampling. Yeah. Let's let's get a scoop. Yeah, as long as we don't keep drifting to the south. Okay. Right. Uh, we can wait and see what happens. Yeah. yeah. I kind of want to see how this settles out. Yeah. It okay. It will take some time for the RVs to get drifted. So yes. I think you have a few minutes if you would like to authorize them. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to get it out. Yeah, let me know if it keeps drifting, though, or now he's going east. So. Okay. I'll give it a sound. Sounds like a prime opportunity, then. I'm going to go a little east, guys, and then we can yeah. start sampling. Roger. Sounds great. Go ahead, Bridge. Okay, copy that. So they will restart. Uh, yep. It's better to be caution uh, as we'll be drifted. But again, the, we will feel the drift after maybe th four or five minutes. Yeah, it'll take us longer than four or five minutes to sample, though. Okay. You've got viewers from six continents. Kelly, you want to log the? I put it in the in here. I'll also put it in the red book. Nobody Roger from that. Antarctica who can tell us about that tree. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe no, Diane knows Antarctica. about it. Oh yeah, we should ask her later. There's another little sea star on the yeah. left side. Oh, sorry. Oh, you're good. Do your thing. About 50 meters drift. Yeah. South and then. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. South and then east. Restarting DP. Yeah. So I think from the uh, previous scoop, we learned that it'll be probably easiest to put um, the scoop in one of the, in, in the other big uh, starboard. starboard box. Mm -hmm. Weather's okay. Roger. Yeah, so do you guys want to dump this, once we do a scoop, do you guys want to dump it on E or do you guys want to dump it on F? Um, we can put it in with the uh, first rock. We could put it in E. E, Roger. Yeah. I think that'll, uh, that'll fit oh, okay. The only constraint is if the scoop doesn't fit right over with, right the, over, with, the bo with a rock in it. Give it a try. So I'd probably, I'd probably suggest maybe putting it with a... Uh, 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 uh. This is even the, the, the replacement scoop is that big? Go ahead, no. Yeah, it's the same, kind of same size. Oh, okay. Okay. Excellent, thank you very much. We can do that. No more big rock collections. That's <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so that's the size you get working with there, Leela. Yeah, sure. Okay. F. So would you like to collect some sample here? Yeah. Yeah, we can stop the ship move that they have currently. Bridge, this is now. Then hold position here, please. Right. Yes, please. I'm going to approach the C4. Roger. Yeah. viewers are writing in to say that they're having some issues with the video. Yeah, Being science team is saying the same thing. I think We've looked into that. that. It's on uh, the land side, the issues. Yeah. 
Yeah. The satellite itself possibly, right? Um, so I understand. Looks like we're still moving, are we? Well, we should be holding position, standby. My understanding is that it's a problem after it gets off the boat. Roger, this is nav. It seems again we are drifted towards uh, west. right now Chris uh, he's talking oh uh, okay something else. there's uh, he has an option to alert our team that there's a video or audio issue so oh, he's cool. gonna do that yeah. now yeah, so you get these little nodules forming because uh, they're uh, manganese crusts that nucleate on small bits of whatever kind of debris is in the area um, often it's a uh, rock or sometimes some kind of sediment sometimes in rare cases it's uh drifted i get to west to the west, west yeah roger yeah in rare cases it's an organism that they start uh nucleating on and uh these can uh, uh preserve some information about uh how manganese crusts grow or erode over time so we're interested in collecting a few of these for um some of our uh, uh, onshore scientists who study uh, mm -hmm. ferromanganese crust development in the ocean. Great. This is NAV. It seems that the same issue uh, repeated with the drifting. Um. Not sure. Yeah. All right, well, I am Come in up. a position for me to sample. If we, if we drift north, then we're going to come up a little bit because that's towards the cliff. Go ahead, bridge. Okay, so is it going to be always drifted? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So can you hold it now if you can? Thank you. Uh, all right. Okay. What's the general direction that it's drifting right now there, Suleiman? It's like a... It's northwest. It's like a 300? Uh, approximately that. Kylie, you want to bring your head to 300? You got it. 300. Apologies to folks that are having some audio and video issues. Get the arm out. Yep, go ahead. Gotcha. Right. It's been reported, Wait, so comms. hopefully it'll oh, get oh, oh, oh. Kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it. Kill oh, oh. Got the kill. Easy. Raj. Okay. We're logging it. Easy. Um. <laughs> All right. So, maybe do you mind? Um, do you mind if I borrow that? Yeah, sure. I'm going to have you look at the arm with bubble. Okay, give me one second. Let me just put that in. And then we're gonna have to look away from it for this. I don't know why that happened. DC Bender was on for that, so perhaps that's a culprit. Maybe. It was doing that last cruise. Running away like that? Yes. Raj. All the time. Great. Nice. A lot of our... It's an eventful day today, guys. <laughs> sure is. Okay. 
It's the valve first, yeah. I mean, I clicked them both very quickly, but uh, valve it is would the one do the solenoid. Yeah, right, Raj. Yep. Okay. And you want to make, I mean, the camera is racked back, right? Um, camera yeah. is full racked back. I am also now looking as far to the so. away from it as I can. Raj. Can we get some stills of the nodule field? Uh, okay, yep. ready All for right. power? Craft power, come on. Yeah. Okay, power's on. I have turned off the DC bender and also the DC sense. Okay. And ready, then ready for craft valve. On your call. No, not yet. Okay, no comms. problem. Well, you won't get comms until I turn the valve on, yeah? I should still get comms with the Oh, Raj. Okay, okay, coming on. Okay. Got it. That's stable, that's good. Make sure we're all the way left, okay. Well. It's hard to see what you're doing, huh? <laughs> Drunk bubble. Okay. Close my claws here. No. No. Go ahead, bridge. Frozen. Okay, let's hold position and then I will back I will get back to you. I appreciate it. Let's still look away. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so we are now managed to hold position. Great. Uh, I don't know if the Vehicles will be drifted in a few minutes okay. uh, because of the last movement. Okay, sure. But it looks we are fine if you would like to collect or do anything. I want to get this stuff sorted out with arm first. Okay. Yeah, I'm up against the solenoid. Raj. Cool. Great. Thank you. Okay. Great. Alright, um, hopefully we're stable, every system is stable now. Okay. Um, Kylie, you want to look over at that scoop there, and I just want to see where the, the puck is for it. Oops. Oh, jeez. And you want to be also on my kill valve? I've got it ready to go. Self-sacrifice here. <sighs> Is there anything in the forward bins right now? Uh, nothing forward. You want to push it out? Yeah, Roger. I'll get as far away from that camera as I can. Roger. I'll keep it on the kill switch if you want to push it out. Roger that. Are right, you going to look down on bubble again there? Cool. Yeah, I don't have terribly good visuals of this guy either. Blind, blind. Cool. The ball is like right here, right? I'm not sure. Yeah. It's like here, down. That's what we want. We want this guy. Now we can get to business. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> uh, looks like the bag is inverted itself. <laughs> nice. There you go. Cool. Very nice. There we go. This one is quite blue. 
Yeah. Very blue. Dabadi, dabadi. <laughs> um, do we want these nodules here, or do you want us to go a little bit to the west? Uh, I think these right in front of us look good. Awesome. Go ahead and push sizes. on in, please. And sorry, what was that, though? I'm ah, um, just saying we have a few different sizes here. Sure. Okay, uh, Beth says no water sample here. So okay. we'll do that later. Yeah. Oh. Mm. Thin layer. Looks so. Oh. I don't think you want a coral, do you? No. Avoid no. sea pens if we can. Maybe off to the right is easier. And come partial wipe. Thank you. These look a bit more in there to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We can try. Yeah, some are sitting a little higher by the looks of it under th where the net is. So if that's a good angle, that might be a little easier to grab, maybe. Sure, we'll give it a go. Okay, awesome. Go ahead and push on in there again, please. That's great. Yeah, nice. Man. I want a big scoop of this guy. Woohoo! <laughs> Going for a ride. Come partial wide. Oops. Thank you. We have a question coming in about why the front Pull boxes wide. are labeled lambda and omega. Nice. Thank you. Uh, they used to be like forward A and forward B, but that got confusing sometimes with the starboard A and starboard B, so. All right, go ahead and push on in again, please. It's a creative choice. Yeah, yeah, this was the most intuitive second option, was not one and two, Just gotta keep, keep ourselves lambda entertained here. And omega, so. so Trevor says he made lambda for left and omega for not left. Yeah, <laughs> yes, he was like, it's simple, lambda for left, and you know, lambda, I wouldn't say that the symbol looks anything like an L for left. You have to know that that symbol means lambda, but. I think we just like tiny horseshoes. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping we could pledge a fraternity or something while we were on board. <laughs> no, no, no. We could do row for right. Oh, no, we did no. not think about that. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> Can I come a little wide there, please? Now let's not change Thank things you. up mid-cruise. <laughs> Yeah, we are. This, that's on Sharpie. We are not unsharpying stuff. 95% nope. <laughs> ethanol can unsharpie anything. True. Hey, so this is going in the starboard bio box, yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So maybe we should secure the starboard vertical because of the twine still on the, um, mm. on the guy here. Yeah, that's kind of a long twine. Okay, yeah, that's a good point. Okay. Okay. But I'll wait until... Yeah. Wait till the dust settles. <laughs> yeah. Um, actually, you want to close up that toolbox now? Sure, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yes. All right, we'll get you another scoop and then call it good, or do you guys want a whole, you guys want a lot, or do you guys want just like a medium amount? I think one more scoop would be fine. Yeah. Okay, Raj. Yeah, we, we don't need to have a huge amount, I think, but. Uh, Is there a preference for your last one, or can I go right in front of me here? Well, I think that looks all right. Good. Yeah. Some little five centimeter chunks. Get a different angle. There we go. Nah, I didn't get much of that. Let me do it again. Okay. We might be dealing with pavement type textures too, and that can make <clears throat> some of these rocks harder to scoop. Yeah, Reg. Sometimes geology works against us. Okay, it's pretty on there. Let's go a little deeper. Nope. So we're gonna miss.
Oh, that's a nice one. Hmm. Can you come pull wide there, please? In there. Yeah. I'll get you guys more. It doesn't feel like it's floating. It's it's not sinking a lot, so mm. there's still room. Can push on in again, please? That's great. Is that pushing the ROV up? Yep. It is. Yeah, it looks hard to, to Come get partial like wide, please. below and up when it's so shallow. Mm -hmm. That one I got a lot, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, was yeah, a yeah. nice scoop. I can see. Yeah, we got a few in the bag. OK. Full wide, please. It's probably fine. I think inside. so. That's probably about as much impact as we want to make on that. Right. Oh, nice. So yeah, this is a miniature version of dredging, basically, and um, this is why you don't want to do this on large scale with big dredges in populated areas, because it does tear things up. That was more intact than expected. Yeah. I just didn't want to come up too easily on this one. You're going to go ahead and push on a bit there. We're going to look at the bag. That's good. I'm going to keep an eye on the arm. Sure. Thank you. I don't feel like there's a lot in there, though. Do you guys want another scoop? I see. It I looks like there's like seven or so pieces in there now. Yeah, there's some in the bottom. Yeah, I think that That's looks probably good. probably all right. Ugh. Stick lock is going crazy. Raj. Yeah, that looks good. That looks like maybe a kilo. That's enough? I think so. Okay. I'm happy with that. Full wide, please. Nice work. That was not an easy scoop to do. Yeah. Let's sit down a bit better here. Yep. Okay, to secure starboard vertical. Yeah, and keep an eye on the delta. Yes. Actually, yeah, stand by on the starboard vert. We'll only garage. do it when we're right, right close to the bin. Sure. Do you want me to put starboard bio out? Yes, please. And garage. you want to switch cameras on the port? Oh, Raj, you got it. Sorry. I thought you wanted the salvo. Camera. Oh, what Camera. was that? And coming out. Sure thing. I think actually we might be able to make it without securing that thruster. Okay. That's up good. Up to you. Roger that. Do you want the box out more? Yes, please. Raj, coming out. It's full out. Thank you. You said GSO, USGS, was there Carrot. one more? Also for you? Oh, for Can Beth. drop it like it's hot. <laughs> oh, stick luck. Beautiful. Good job. So nice. Coming in. Sure. Thank you. You think it'll make it? Yeah, I think it will. Nice work. Dive salvo, Roger. Question for the ROV pilots. Why did we use the scoop that we did? It has a mesh bag on it that we 
Well, we can use to like sieve for more nodules. Imagine it collects a lot less of that sediment and lets it, mm -hmm. like you said, sieve out. I see why I'm moving around. Argus has swung a bit. Let me get over there to you. Quite a bit. Sure. Right off. Off. So, Ivan, what's going to be our next uh, heading? Zero one five. Zero one five. Zero one five. Coming up. Roger. I suppose these are actually a bit smaller over here. <laughs> Probably would have been an yeah, easier grab. Yeah, very suddenly smaller. I wonder what controls that. A question for the ROV pilots. Uh, what is the most challenging part of driving an ROV? I really didn't like the current the other day. Yeah, the currents are no fun. The currents down here are strong. Cool. They're like, they're like big sails. Go ahead. Ready for it? Yeah, go ahead. Approaching this is nav. Uh, bearing zero one five fifty meters. Affirmative. Can you talk a little bit about how you each became to be an ROV pilot? What was your pathway to get here? I had an internship here um, with no prior experience on a ship, except for like the uh, Martha's Vineyard Ferry once or <laughs> twice. <laughs> that was just to go to a school game. Um, but um, you don't need any particular set of skills. You just need um, to a couple opportunities to see what the work is like in the field, if that's what you're interested in. Um, and um, well, you have to like to solve problems to and to work on a team. Well, and right there. Um, there's lots of different ways that you can qualify yourself for this position and all of them are valid. Um, and I th think also one of the hardest things or like the things I've gotten better at over time is uh, monitoring all the inputs that we use to pilot with, um, like all of the different camera perspectives, all of the different sonars, the winch um, information being fed to us, the delta depth between the vehicles, um, our altitudes, our, um, like the biology around us that we don't want to knock over, like the high voltage numbers, um, coming from the ship, um, being able to scan everything and perceive it quickly and, and make decisions based off things that you're seeing as they're changing, um, and listening to the science at the same time. Um, that's a skill, um, that you can develop with with time and experience um but i recommend up applying for an at sea rov internship if you have never uh worked at sea start with that see if it's something that you like um and then otherwise um please visit the core of exploration um biography pages on the nautiluslive.org website for um clues to each individual's uh, pathway to the positions that you're interested in because they are very 
they're varied amongst all of us. And um, they, you might find one that feels more like yourself um, than another person's story. Um, that's, that's what I did when I was a, uh, before I was an intern, after I was an intern, because I was still looking for more ways to even just grow within the industry. Um, so I was trying to use the other people that have already climbed this ladder to help identify rungs that I could grab onto to keep going. Um. That was a great answer. Yeah, well said. Thank you. Thank you. I like the imagery associated too. Mm -hmm. Rungs. <laughs> yeah, the rungs in a ladder. Mm -hmm. And they don't work for everybody, so you've got to just check everybody's ladders out. I really do. You can see how much this coral is taking advantage of this kind of more consolidated ridge. Is that a tube there? Like a like with a brittle star or something on yeah, top of it? Yeah, a sponge. Yeah. Oh, this one? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. it looked like the tube that we sucked from the, uh, the, the tube anemone okay. a little bit. But yeah, yeah, it might be a sponge. I just don't have eyeball zoom. It's a weird Walteria <sighs> angle and a little dead-ish, maybe. Yeah. Imagine if we did have eyeball zoom. <laughs> Go ahead and push do a quick zoom there. That's good. I guess it would look kind of like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't yep. mind that. All right, full wide, please. You, you need to discover the zoom function on the telestrator. Oh. Is it pinch to zoom? No, no, no. Nope. Here, I'll show you. All this new technology. <laughs> Um, be careful about that, though, because I have Telestrator up as my um, feed that oh. I'm watching. <laughs> I keep forgetting the sidebars there because it's just barely out of my field of view. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, one of the different things we're seeing in this uh, nodule field, besides the sea pens, is that a couple of the others that we've been across in previous dives have had more uh, sea stars. We just oh, passed yeah. one that looked like it took care of that bamboo coral. Yeah. But yeah, there has been fewer. You can, I've seen a lot more kind of false, false uh, finds, but it turns out to be these rocks that have sort of flipped over as the coral flops over, shows a bad uh, base mm -hmm. for stability anyways. Very rubbly up here. Yeah, we're still, we're moving toward that steeper section, but we're still kind of just above it, huh? Yeah. I yeah. I think it might be wise on our next move to speed up slightly, and then we, and, uh, to anticipate uh, moving over back over to the uh, the slope. Yeah, sure thing. I think after the waypoint we're headed to, the ridge gets a little more narrow. Yeah, and things get a lot steeper on the uh, east side of the ridge, and that's where we've been finding some interesting things. So uh, we'll uh, we'll uh, resume that kind of survey uh, after we cross waypoint two. If you want, we can increase the speed right now. We're pretty flat. Okay. Go point three at least. Yeah. Sounds like a good idea. And okay. we can get up to point three. Bridge. This is now. Uh, we can make the speed now 0 0.3 knots. Yes, please. Hmm? <laughs> One of our viewers works in the gaming industry, wants to know if there's a way that they could volunteer to make 3D models. Yes. Oh, yeah. They can do whatever just, they Just do it, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And if you, you know, ever find, have a cool idea, there are lots of awesome research labs that probably do something sort of adjacent and would be really happy to work with you. Yeah, because if they want to volunteer, that means they're just doing it for themselves. Yeah, yeah and they perhaps they could have access to some of the computation power or whatever of a yeah. lab. Yeah. You know, I think um, I think Ambari has like a special sensor that they put on their vehicle sometimes that like three mm. D maps and identifies the um, biology oh, as cool. the ROV um, surveys. 
and that might be a good um, resource for them to work from. Hmm. That's a good idea. I read an article about it, but I don't, it was like a couple of years now ago, and I just can't remember what exactly it's called, but it's through Ambari, and they had like a press release on their website. Hmm. Yeah, and I know that there are cruises uh, that OET and a few other uh, institutions do where they do try to shake down um, newer tech and test out uh, some innovative stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, the leg I was on in, uh, and Lila was on in 2018, I can't remember his name, but... Hey, Suleiman, um, uh, it looks like Richard the name of the leg. Or, yeah, sorry, to the list. We, we, uh, we circled a few of those larger sponges. And oh, was, yeah. And then they were able Push to... this is now. Thanks, Carly. That yeah, was it the... It seems again we are drifted. Uh, sediment relative to nodule density has changed quite a bit as we've been uh, traversing across this the last few minutes. Definitely. Mm -hmm. um, that was sort of the structure for motion um, photo mosaic okay, type. Yeah. Roger. Mm -hmm. So back row, we are, uh, we're sliding off to the west again, so yeah. we'll let you know when the ship regains control. All right. Thanks for the update. Yep. We will hang out. So uh, there was a question about uh, whether the data logger uses a timestamp recording. And are you putting Go data ahead, um, to the PC or are you logging by hand? Uh, yeah, lots of different ways that we're logging. Um, oh, we're still on Zoom. In one of the things I have open. Okay. Even if you try to hold position, we'll see. Sorry, while we uh, get okay. the ship straightened out, I'm also going to get this guy out of our face. Hemp line. Wrong way. We went this way. Ah, okay, that's enough out of our face. Um, one of the things I have open is C-Log, which is the web-based logging platform that we use, and that integrates a whole bunch of stuff. It has the timestamp of every single entry that I enter, um, and it's also, we can take our images, our still captures of the video through that as well. We enter all kinds of things in there, um, like engineering issues or observations or the dive status events, um, and then so that we have something, uh, samples get entered in there too, and so that we have something in the wet lab when we're processing samples that we can write directly on when our hands are sort of wet and dirty um, is uh, paper, paper logs that are just a duplicate of the digital thing that we've logged. Um, and that gets translated back later on into a digital version. Um, yeah, so mm. mostly not by hand. And we do have timestamps and also not just timestamps but with every single observation and sample um, we take a grab of all the um, sort of CTD data from Hercules so the, the temperature the depth the oxygen concentration um, yeah salinity yep, all of that metadata comes in handy some point or another O2's down to about 55, so it's okay. still coming down. Uh, Beth said she uh, uh, she's th uh, planning to revise her target uh, downward to around 40. And is planning on doing that when she comes on watch? Yeah. Yep. Is that another purple crinoid there in that Chrysogorgia? Yeah, it looked All like right. it. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, sure enough. Go ahead and do a quick zoom there. Yeah. Let's get there. And a whole ethereum to the right of it. It's very dark in color. Yeah, that one's uh, 
It almost looks like a, a root. Yeah. Not very purple. Yeah, the other one was a deep purple that kind of graded into some lighter shades. Ooh, don't yeah. like it. Full wide. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the heebie jeebies. <laughs> I was I was checking our log and then I looked up and I was like Whoa. <laughs> I think what Chris, I this is Nav uh, are we holding position now or trying to move towards uh, zero nine zero? There's a question about how long okay. it takes. Roger. How long it takes for the ROVs to descend to the bottom from the ship? Uh, it does depend on. So it seems to still have the same issue, uh, but in manual they can kind of control it. I right. would suggest to start moving zero four five maybe. Zero four five, Raj. Oh, zero four zero, yeah. Yeah, that sounds By good. By manual, we'll see. Sure thing. Bridge, this is Nav. If we can make a move towards bearing zero four zero, please proceed. Affirmative. Uh, make it fifty meters. He can do it. He's gonna do it manual. Manual. So it takes up to a couple hours. So we'll give it a try, see if it works. Then. Roger. How far away from that plateau there? About uh, 100 uh, meters? No, this is the, the suggested point, but actually the point is, I think it's like 400 meters, this one. Roger. Which is 500 meters. But Roger. the plan is to go here and then start moving towards this way. Yeah. Maybe we can do it on the shallower of those contours as we parallel, because if we keep running away to the west, then it's going to drag us right into the slope yeah. if we're, we're not careful. Okay. Uh, back row. So, uh, one thing to keep in mind is I know we want to go along that steeper ridge there. Mm -hmm. um, so, if we can aim for a bit shallower of those contours. Um, like paralleling along that cliff because it seems that we have a tendency to 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 kind of run off to the west okay so we just don't want to run off into the slope so just the thing to keep in mind as we approach that area okay that sounds like a good thing to plan for because we don't want to go bouncing off the ridge oh yeah totally not okay yeah uh we can do that cool but we'll wait we'll approach it with caution and we'll parallel as much as we can but if we keep on running off to the west then we might need to adjust course Absolutely. Yeah, let's play that by ear. Great. All right, we'll do a pilot swap. Got one on an hour left. Raj. Yeah, so we're kind of working our way out of this uh, nodule field up on the splatter area of the ridge that we're traversing right now, and uh, we're starting to see uh, uh, some lava flows uh, that we're moving over, and uh, we'll start moving over those again as we uh, continue forward. It's a pretty big nodule field. This is looking much more like uh, uh, debris that's piling so up. So we are, things are we in? You want to just log? Peeking over Christopher's shoulder, and it sounds like that. I hear you. Chana Cops uh, yeah. video is just uploaded onto our YouTube channel, EV Nautilus channel. Yeah, here I'll correct it. I have you tuned up for Jess, so when you switch, I have to change the audio for you. I think Rhett's going to adjust your levels. I, I think it's. <laughs> Hello. 
I, it's hard to hear you, yeah, right? Still no. Okay. <laughs> Roger. We all got a shout out from Mexico City. A big oh. thank you. They said we are real life superheroes. Oh, <laughs> so sweet. That is kind. Sorry. Uh, question for first time explorers on the watch. What's something about ocean exploration that you find most surprising? Mm. I think that's for you, Rhett. Rhett's busy. He might be off SPL. I'm trying to fix an audio problem at the moment, but I can come back in a minute. Okay, no problem. For me, I, I think... I can hear you better, yeah. The most surprising thing is how comfortable a ship can be in some ways. Uh, there's cushions on the yeah. on the seats and a nice lounge. A very nice uh, lounge. The beds are not army issue. Yeah. Yeah. Actual mattress. We do have it pretty good on. It is pretty good. <laughs> we had the best Easter dinner yesterday. Oh my goodness. That was a little bit crazy. There uh, was so much food. The thing is, it all gets eaten. Yeah. I think that was the surprise. I thought I'd be roughing it. And I think I. <laughs> we'll keep moving same steps. <laughs> Roger that. Thank you. I'm definitely not. Delta? How about uh, returning explorers? What's the most unique thing about this mission yep. compared to other missions you've been on? Bridge, this is not. Before the end of this uh, move, make another move, same step. Definitely doing this work inside a protected marine area. That's that's very unique, um, especially with uh, uh, the, uh, the, the integration of um, uh, uh, a lot of the uh, cultural traditions too. Something I'd like to see a little bit more of in uh, you know some of these uh, uh, some of these expeditions. I would say that the Office of National Marine Sanctuaries is we're all working to, to do a better job of that across our sanctuary system. Papa Hanaomokuakea is sort of one of the the models within the system. Yeah, that's been really great about this cruise, even. Since the first time we came out to the monument, I feel like, it, you know, that's been more integrated and oh, I think makes the experience a lot richer. It really does. Zero for zero. It's a, a reflection of a lot of work of, of quite a few people. Mm -hmm. Thank you. The, uh, there was actually a new position created. A colleague of mine I really respect is in... Um, at the regional level is the cultural resources coordinator across the Pacific. So it's nice to see those positions being created and uh, more room for people to get this work, to do this work, because it definitely takes time. If folks are interested, there's actually a, a really amazing uh, guiding document that will be incorporated into our new management plan. Um, called Mai Kapomai, and that is available on the OHA Office of Hawaiian Affairs uh, website for download. Um, and I believe we have a link to it from our papahanaomokuakea.gov website. But if you uh, type in OHA and then Mai, M A I, Ka, K A, Po, P O, and then Mai, M A I, um, I you can download that really powerful document it reflects 10 years of community engagement and work within the Native Hawaiian community. There's some really awesome figures in that document. Um, graphs, bit maps of the monument and pictures of different islands. Is that a... Arjun? Anemone? I don't know. I see the spikes behind it, I thought. 
I think you're right, Lilo. Easily confused. <laughs> Is that that pom-pom an enemy you were it telling me about? Kind of looks like it, but also a bit more like long and spindly tentacles. I don't know. We'll see in a second, maybe. It looks kind of like the one that we uh, brought in yesterday. Yeah. The oh, like Ursula. Yeah. Hi, Sandy. Video zoom. Yeah, no, it's not a pom pom. Okay. Um, it looks more like the one with the R that I always forget. Nice shot. Thanks. That is a beautiful shot. You want lasers on? Oh yeah, that. Oh I, yeah, sure. I remember seeing that Get in the guide. Get lasers. I'll have that. All right. Thank you. Uh, Relicanthus, was that what it was called? That sounds right. Okay, I'm come on. I'm pulling up my guide, too, so I can remember. Got oh, it. yeah, Got it. there we go. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Relicanthus. Good call. Another question about our watch. Uh, do we maintain a steady watch schedule even when we're not diving? Yes. Except for like when we're transiting back, the ROV will kind of split our watches a little bit differently. Can we zoom on this sponge really quick? Chris Ooh. had asked for yes. oh, that a while back. Something like that anyways. For zooms on it? Uh, yeah. Or for having. Let's see. Let's we'll see if that's stocked or not. Okay, hold on a second. See, before he went to go run his puppy. Video partial zoom. Oh, I'm coming a little tighter. It looks like it might not be stocked. Maybe not. Looks like it's sitting right on but a rock. But I don't see those Bissell threads either. Different morphology in its head. Oops, come on uh, a little bit. From, from the other ones, too. A little more. That's good. Uh, science, do you have what you need? Because I kind of need to keep going. Oh, yeah, keep going. yeah, That's go fine. ahead. Thank you for doing that. No I'm problem. Trying to find his comment back in our science chat. Yeah, yeah I gotta go. You um, full wide? Thank you. Yeah, so on the question of watches, uh, science party, if we're not diving, some of, some of the overnight stuff. Can you tilt down just a little bit for me and make it feel like I have... Yeah, like I'm not up less personally to 12 to 4 if we're not diving, um, but I also spend Hello, a lot Therian. of extra time in the wet lab um, uh, getting some uh, uh, reports written like some basic field notes uh, uh, compiled and some uh, sampling done um, on what we've brought up. Yeah, I'll usually keep like a 2 to 10 instead if we're not diving. We'll yeah. go to bed at 2 a.m. Stay up doing lots of dive reports and stuff. I don't know if you guys have any interest in a Niskin here or anything, but I'm just seeing a lot of biology start to pick up here. Yeah, it's um, nice. It's nice to see that. Yeah, I guess there are some different things than we saw previously. Yes. It wouldn't hurt. We only have one so far. Okay. How far off of the bottom have you been doing it? I've been doing like two or so. Okay. I'll come up a bit. <laughs> Thanks. I don't know how consistent Shall this is. Shall we keep though. moving? That's you. Okay. I don't know, maybe not. Okay. Now that I'm looking around. Sure. Yeah, we'll um, keep moving. Thanks for checking with us. No problem. Keep moving, same direction. Rad, rad. It's hard to decide what feels like dense. Yeah. yeah. Bridge, uh, okay. Bridge, this is nav, another move. 50 meters, zero, 040. Zero. Those are mostly Space. bamboo. Bamboo, they? yeah. They're tall. Lasers back There's on. that one that's all kind of curled at the end, like a. Another oh yeah, that's the fairy, feria sponge. I oh guess yeah. So. Those are the. It looks like it has that same sort of. Yeah, uh, dark. Deposit. 
Is that just a rock? Yeah. I don't think so. Interesting rubble area. Yeah. So geologically, things look a little different. So it could be looking at a stack of sheet flows, or it could be like one of our previous dives where we had some similar looking uh, strata that ended up. Oh, look, uh, there's being another sponge kind of on the rock. You see it? Oh, yeah. The one with the crinoid? Um, I think she's looking at the one oh, right there. back here. Just above the lasers. Yeah. Good eye. So yeah, either we're looking at some thin sheet Let's flows or we might be looking at another hyaloclastite deposit. I'm not entirely sure oh, yet. Oh, really? Um, yeah, that was with, uh, we saw some similar strata and some hyaloclastites. I think it was the last dive. Hmm. Video but zoom? It, it's hard to tell. I still can't see any of the threads, okay. right. if they're there. It almost just looks like a super squat version of the stock two pugtelids we've seen. Reminds me of a dumpling. Huh. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Like a soup dumpling. <gasps> oh, soup dumpling. Oh, that dumplings. sounds so good. We I had think that I'm today. a little hungry. OK, come on. <laughs> Thank you. We had an first soup dumpling today, though. <laughs> I did see that. Soup on the outside. I'm gonna have to go home and make some gluten-free dumplings. <laughs> Do a soup that way. We have a hello to Leela from George. That's Moto. Oh, hi George. So nice of you to tune in. Sea star. Yeah. Right, Getting ready to climb to up there. Yeah. About your expedition when you return. Yeah, George like is one of the research scientists at Mbari that. Um, Kylie was talking about earlier, right. Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute. Yeah, this is lava flow. I don't see, uh, uh, doesn't look like um, volcanoclastic morphology to me. It's just some sort of stack of lava flows there. Kind of enjoying this little forest I'm branch. I'm pushing corals. down the lot. <laughs> this forest and every time forest. I push down it. Yeah. Sorry. Are we still drifting a little bit? Uh, it looks like we're manually driving up. Yeah. Okay. You know what, Kylie? I like these sparse branches, and there are a lot of them. I like I, them too. I think I think any DNA might be good. Okay, <laughs> Raj. Would you like to hold position? I think so. We could we do can, it on the fly. We can one do too. it on the fly. Okay. We do not need to hold position. Even better. Roger. That's. Yeah, I guess it is right there. And we could try and go for one, back it up. Okay. Maybe it'll be a little more cooperative. We could try. Try. <laughs> I believe in you. It's just, we don't want to poke the camera with the hand. So okay. we get what we can. <laughs> yeah, no poking yourself in the eye, please. No, that would be the dive ender, and I don't like it, that. Yeah, <laughs> like, agreed. <laughs> Look at that view. Right. Raj coming down a little bit. And this will be 092 Suleiman. Okay. That red one does look a little pinched, but maybe it's just the angle. It's just twisted funny, so like monofilament. Beautiful. 
Well played. Okay, coming off. Coming off. And just give me a porch again when you get a chance. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Some Sweet very nice it. on the fly sampling. We can do anything. I can straighten up your camera if you want there, Kylie. Oh, I'm gonna say, I, I know it. I'm always like, I can do two things at once. Reg. I can do it. I did it. <laughs> I'm gonna just push push past past the arm for me there, Rhett. Thank you. This does give a feeling of going through like Joshua Tree or something like that. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> I like that. And I'm gonna go. You know, long way. I've been on the edge of Joshua Tree more than once, and I've never actually been in the park. Oh my gosh! As a geologist, you've been I to know. Joshua Tree. Can we look at the sponge that's over this way? I've been to Yellowstone. Well, you guys, we're gonna have to push out in front, so we'll have to hold on the observations there. Sorry. Okay. No yeah, let's. Yeah, let's get uh, back to where we need to be, or over to where we need to be. Once I can get back in the view of Atlanta, we can do things. Yeah, I've I've been to like arches and been all over Moab and uh, Yellowstone, so all sorts of other cool places. But yeah, uh, Joshua Tree is some place I've never been. That's a and good one. Like, I've been near the Grand Canyon, yep. but I've never been to the Grand Canyon. It's kind of uh, mm -hmm. kind of wild. The, I, mean, I got some catching up to do. Same. We, um, Rennie and I were like, I don't. We were gonna go to the north side of the Grand Canyon, and there was a fire along the entrance, oh, and we ended up not going. So I've still never been. I've tried multiple times. Shall we keep moving or? You would like yep. to fall. How are you feeling? Feel good. All right. Yeah. Keep moving. So, back row, would you like to move around um. along this edge, like zero one zero? Zero one zero. Uh, what's up with my camera? Sorry, I'm whining on SPL. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just fix this really quickly. <laughs> I thought I had it all straight. And Does it look good? Drifted off. Yeah, I like that heading. Yeah, that looks good. good. The uh, move will be on bearing zero one zero fifty meters, please. Affirmative. Hey, you want to push out ahead there, Kylie? I'm trying. Raj. She's trying. I will say the Trudus opiolite um, in Cyprus is pretty cool. Look, I'm, I'm way closer than I look if you took down. As a <laughs> <laughs> Almost got struck the by lightning now. up on Mount Trudus at the high point of that opiolite. We probably shouldn't have been up there in the middle of a storm. Is that just sediment? I don't know what that is. What do you guys think that is, or a dead sponge? Uh, maybe. No, it's fine, don't worry about it. Yeah, we're still getting in position for this next move. Yeah, yeah. we're just doing on the fly bio over here. <laughs> on the fly bio, Raj. How close were you to the lightning? Uh, not sure, but it was pretty close, like a few hundred yards. Yikes. Yeah. We passed another purple crinoid below us. Looked like it was on a okay. top of a coral. I couldn't see which kind. Dead bamboo skeleton, says Osako. Let's see. So the fun thing about driving through uh, mountainous areas too as a geologist is uh, you get the road cuts. So you do like flyby geology that way. Try to get a peek at the road cut as you pass it. Zero one zero. Let's put both our headings there. It's really hard to do in some of the places with uh, really spectacular structural exposures and some of the road cuts. Sometimes just all you want to do is just pull over and just go stand on the side of the road and look at the road cut. <laughs> <laughs> I like where this density is going. Our community is getting a little more interesting. It is. Yeah. I wasn't sure what we were going to find on top of the ridge because uh, like yesterday, for example, it was kind of sparse mm -hmm. up on the flatter areas. So I was, I, I, I was taking a risk 
I thought, getting up on top of the ridge, and we're pleasantly surprised by what we're seeing. How tall do you think these bamboos are? A couple meter or something? More yeah, than a meter. Yeah, like a meter and a half for some of them. Yeah, we're two meters off uh, the bottom here. <laughs> Our starboard vertical is off from, oh, the, from when we were sampling. Why. That's why. That's why we're flying so funny. Cool. Oh, no. Are Try we that. Balanced? But we didn't turn it off. They must have had the same idea that they had, though. Hmm. I didn't. I never turned it off. Oh, Reg. Because you said we didn't oh, need to, fish. so I didn't. Fish. Oh. But you're flying. It feels better, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then I can go down and not wobble. We will wobble. <laughs> oh, we fell that off the whole watch. Cool. Back into mushroom corals <laughs> and uh, sea pens again suddenly as we get into this module. So much for handover. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really Seriously. Dense. Huh. I wish I, I wish I had gone to that page because I would have been like, hey, it's already off. That's you know? a good idea of bringing a snack up Lila, here. what do you think? This is, this is two corals. We have the Chrysoborgia and then a... A what? whip or something? Or is Where are we looking? Like a stalk. Uh, it's kind of below us now. It's okay. It's okay. There are a lot of you know, oh, bam they're bamboo whips. Us. Right. You're looking at the really small, narrow, skinny things? Here and then the... Oh. It looks like the same organism. No, that's a chrysogorgia and a bamboo whip behind it. I yeah. think. But I don't know what the super skinny sea pen, sea pens are. Probably, yeah. I don't know. Some kind of, some kind of sea pen. Video zoom. The sea pens really like these nodule fields. They do. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Sako is uh, pointing out that we are uh, shallower than 2,000 meters now. About. Mm -hmm. uh, 1977 squatty okay come on thank you so there's a huge pile of cheetos over in the snack oh area oh my god yeah that's gonna be gone by the time our watch is over i hoarded a couple of bags that's what so you gotta you go. do you hook up, let you're me a know. pro mm -hmm. oh, look at jelly it's yes, a baby jelly yeah, it's it's one of the snacks that that uh, has no, no weed coral? in it so i'm jumping on it <laughs> has what <laughs> doesn't yeah. have any wheat in it so no wheat in it yeah like uh, scrolling down on the Rob Navs screen, please. Okay. So not much use if I'm not feeling good. So. A shrimp. Looks like we're going to the west again. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Mm -hmm. Push this is nav. Again, it seems we are drifting towards uh, west. What's that? Oh, I missed it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we're alternating between some more heavily sedimented areas where you get those nodule fields growing and then they uh, suddenly revert back to lava flows. So we're seeing yeah. more of that alternating uh, landscape. Oh, is it still pixelated, Asako? Sorry to hear that. Check the right colony. The right colony. It's hard when I think the video is a bit delayed. Yeah. It's and probably passed up. I don't know what this yellow is on the side, though, on the right. On the right. Is that a dead sponge, maybe? Right here. No. Okay. So I don't think so. Maybe. I don't know. I'm just asking questions. No, I, I am really involved. loving the bio interest from you, Val. Video Hey, zoom. I want to know more about what I'm no, seeing. It's great. I may be a rock enthusiast, but I'm also a... Got I don't one? know this thing enthusiast. Tell me more. Go ahead, Bridge. Go ahead, Bridge. AKA scientist. Yes. <laughs> pretty much been one my entire life <laughs> what do you think Leela? i don't know i'm not great with the sort of plexorid uh, to manual mode you said okay so hold uh, once you can able to hold let me know oh yeah yellowish colony that's what asaka was asking about too oh okay we'll see if maybe she has some input yeah i'm hoping the video quality is behaving for her Okay, back row. Um, we're drifting off to the west again, so okay. Um, we are going to make sure we can hold position and or the bridge is going to troubleshoot some of the ship issues and we'll let you know when we're making way towards that waypoint again. Okay, sound, sounds good. Okay. We I are think kind of not holding not position not now, on. but we'll watch. I don't think your mic's on. Oh, yeah, that's a big drift. Well, up and down is so strong now. <laughs> Yeah, we'll work within uh, whatever whatever yeah. conditions we need to. Okay, I got Christopher's it. Christopher's pointing out another whole Thurian for us. Yeah, one. Make 
my down less down because it is too down now. I wasn't hearing your mic for some reason. Me? Oh, Christopher. Sorry. Oh, Raj. I was just being too quiet. I wasn't either. I haven't heard Christopher for a while. Sorry. That's okay. I'm not good at interrupting. <laughs> no worries. Or maybe I'm too good at interrupting. I'm trying not to. <laughs> Roger. You're doing fine. <laughs> what is this weird little white thing right there? But if you can stop, no problem. It's like a skeleton. I can just try to breeze by it sort of deal. Oh. Oh, yeah, the rock tumbled over, so it's a coral skeleton. Those are the ones that throw me. They go horizontal. It's so cool to see all these, the Ferreira backbones that seem to be scattered around. I wonder what this area looked like when they were living. Yeah, oh, a little fishy. Since you are holding position, shall we keep moving towards zero two zero? Yes. Yeah, if we're holding position, then yeah, let's continue on. So I'm almost wondering if this drift is going Go to... Go ahead, Rich. Oh, sorry. X. Let's try, okay, zero two zero fifty meters. Great, thank you. Roger, zero two zero. Osako is agreeing that the yellow colonies could be plexorids of some kind. Oh cool, that one came through, okay. So I'm kinda of wondering if um if the the western drift is not going to go away, would it be um better to traverse over to the west side of the ridge and look down that face? Yeah, so either um, what would be good for us is, sorry, they pulled the high pack screen again. Um, either we stay along kind of the contours that aren't so tight together so that we don't go and run into a cliff face, um, or or we can look to the, to the western side of the slope uh, if you guys have a preference of either east or west, then I'd, I'd suggest we go west. Okay. Um, I think that might be a wise thing to do. Great. Yeah, yeah. Try to make this work uh, with us instead of against us and still get some of that, uh, still see what kind of fauna is growing on those uh, steep slopes. It could be different on the two sides too, but we don't know until we find out, until uh, we go and see it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, then if that's okay with you guys, then that would be most comfortable for us at least okay yeah let's let's do that then and just work with the conditions that we're we're operating in sure thing look at this guy That's for those just one. joining us we're about a third of the way through a 24-hour dive on the mercury seamount which is in the pacific ocean in the papahanamokaiakea marine national monument Northwest of the inhabited Hawaiian Islands. Okay. So, uh, hey, uh, quick question now. So, would you mind sc scrolling out or zooming out on the high pack screen, please? Ah, good idea. Zooming out. Okay, so if we want to traverse west um, up to waypoint two, perhaps if we want to cut kind of this way here and then go along these contours. Right, so, uh, Val, do you guys want to hit waypoint two, or do you guys would you guys rather we parallel one of those deeper contours to the west of waypoint two? Um, ah, perfect. You anticipated my question there, Suleiman. Um, I don't think we need to precisely hit waypoint two. Um, if we end up uh, following one of the contours just below it, um, that's fine with me. Yeah, like that. Okay. Yeah, so we go just, uh, I don't know, just a little bit uh, west of it. Okay, sure thing. So, so waypoint three is up at the top, but we can kind of maneuver in from the west and the north on waypoint three. Okay, Raj. That go. might even be after shift change. Yeah, I like that, Suleiman. This is good? Yeah, that looks, that looks perfect. Great. Let's see how ship behaves after this move, then we'll proceed. Roger. Okay. 360. Yeah. Once we make that turn towards waypoint three, I guess it's going to stop mattering as much what side we're on. Yeah, another sponge there. Yeah. Three, four, I'm amazed at how many sea pens there are. I know. Mm -hmm. 
So we've had a sponge dive, we've had a coral dive, now we're having a sea pen dive. Video zoom. Weird morphology. Oh yeah. I can't tell where the osculum is. <laughs> so it's kind of fractal-like structures. Those are on, those are inside, right? Those are internal structures. Maybe they're on the mm -hmm. other side. Uh, okay. re yeah, really like the whole way through. Okay. Okay. So it's pretty translucent then. just got a big thank you from a grandparent of a seven-year-old who watches us whenever he can. All right. Hello. Thank you for watching and showing us to your grandkid. Yeah, what a cool activity. Yeah. I didn't know this was a thing until I was 25. Yeah. So I'm start them young, really. You know. Absolutely, yeah. Look at the um, Atalanta view. It's kind of cool, like wavy striations. Yeah. It's those sediment patches, you see them? Yeah. Yeah, that's, so that's like rocky patches, though, consolidated into wave forms. I wonder if that's giving us some paleo current info. Oh. Brett, you want to push in on Atalanta a bit there, please? Sure. That looks like a function. That of that. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. That looks like some depositional structure there. Yeah, when I was in elementary school, we actually did see some of the JD Project videos. That's cool. Really? I was super into it when I was young and then just kind of like forgot about it for a long time because I yeah. I hadn't I didn't think I would ever stand a chance being able to do actually exactly what I'm doing right now. <laughs> really? Oh. You're pro. You ended it's up just where you were supposed to be. It's wild how that happens sometimes. Yeah. It's just it is. a bunch of just lucky opportunities. I know. I would have never guessed this for myself. Right. I was like, I don't know. I'll work at Dunkin' Donuts until I die. Like, not because I didn't have aspirations, but just because, like, where I'm from, it's just a blue-collar town, and, like, you just you just work in service of different kinds, you know? Yeah. And the, I was, I was working at, I was going to school at a community college, and it just happened to have, um, like a good STEM club and the STEM club was a um, like the regional host for the May ROV competition uh -huh. and um, it, we were helping basically like middle school and high school kids um, like with their ROV competitions and that was like even though it was like a f new thing to me also um, helping them with hands-on stuff helped me build confidence in it and it helped me gain mentorship from the people that ran those programs and then that I think was enough to build a good candidacy for the internship program here um, and it all kind of built on itself you know yeah yeah that's a total springboard yeah yeah and sometimes that's exactly what folks need and so the more of those like grassroots opportunities that you have more chance you have to end up doing something totally amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are you ready for it? Three, four, five? Three, four, mm -hmm. three, four five. Let, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Do it. Also, Pressure, this is Nav. Three, four, five, 50 right, you meters. You want to come full wide on, Ar on Atalanta? Thank you. What's oxygen say on your screen right now? Oop, good question. What was that? Yeah, it's oh, we're, we're checking uh, oxygen concentrations. Oh, Raj. Uh, 5726. It hasn't changed a lot in a while. No. I think we've been kind of at the same ele Yeah, we've been at the same elevation uh, depth for uh, quite, a, quite a bit now. Also, I'd like to say that um, even though it's, uh, like, it's a big industry, um, like, ocean research it's also a very small network of mm -hmm. people very um like you do tend to know your counterparts across the world um that are specialized in your field so um if you do if you can find a mentor or a school teacher or um, somebody that 
you can kind of that is linked into this that really is enough to um, get yourself into the web of people doing this work and correct a yeah. lot of us see ourselves in the people that are asking questions about how to get into this yeah and are willing to um, you know help where they can make a connection for you when they can um, you know pass along opportunities for growth um, if, if they see them you know so just stick with it definitely Kylie, you have like a very motivational yeah. outlook on this. It's wonderful. I just am like bewildered that this opened a whole world for me and that I have, like, I still have the opportunity to do it. It's not lost on me, really, you know? Yeah. And I, I did not have any experience with any of it before my internship. So you don't have to have, like, these special life circumstances to qualify you to do this. You just have to have an one open door and a curiosity and a passion and just kind of like the courage to try it. Yeah, Some op sometimes opportunities come up where it's wise to say yes. There's yes. You just can't say no to it. And some of those have opened up for me too and it's completely changed my life. Yeah. I mean, have you ever noticed that um, when the squat lobsters are around corals, we see some Oops. pinkish squat lobsters that are most often near the pinker corals and white ones near the whiter corals or sponges. Mm. But mm. there's no light down here, so they're wondering why that association might be. That's if it is in fact an association. Something I'm going to keep out, keep mm -hmm. looking for. Now that it's interesting. They pointed it out. Yeah. And yeah, one thing that I am aware of is that um, the uh, this this whole community, this whole group of people who does this, uh, we are always looking for you know younger, early career folks to get involved. We're looking for that new generation of uh, scientists, and technicians, pilots. Uh, coming in to help keep uh, these explorations going. Mm -hmm. And we're in the midst of a uh, decade long effort to really uh, push to map more and more of the seafloor too. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be a busy time for, uh, uh, for ocean expeditions. Yeah, and the decade of ocean science is not just about is definitely includes the seabed 2030 mapping ambitions, but also there are lots of opportunities popping up through that. Um, lots of other goals and missions uh, of the ocean decade, including uh, you know better characterizing our deep sea habitats and fauna and protect better protecting them and managing them. So there are lots of different angles too that you can get into this from. Maybe yeah. even if sh being at, on a ship is not your thing, mm -hmm. there are tons of um, opportunities in science communication or science policy um, that might speak to you as well, or mm -hmm. data management of all the uh, insane amount of data that gets collected out here. Yeah, so the grandparent who uh, left that comment, you know, <coughs> hope to see your grandkid on the ship someday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I was doing um, like general engineering which I, I didn't even really know what that meant. I was like, I want to be an engineer, but that's because I I think they make money. Um, I didn't <laughs> like know what an engineer does, but I just needed, if I was going to start school at 24, I needed it to like pay off, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, I ended up in this like class that I didn't need, that some guy just kept saying, you gotta take this class, you gotta take this class. And I was like, I don't need that class, I don't want that class, but he bo he bothered me a lot. So I just <laughs> took the class so he'd shit up. And um, it was ocean technology. <laughs> and it was so cool. <laughs> it was so cool. <laughs> I didn't know that we studied the ocean with the robots. I just thought that scientists do science in the water. I just, I didn't understand that technology that they used to to do it um, could be an engineering discipline um, but I got to basically every every class this is now another move same step 
Every class was like a, a small research project about like the history of some technology. Um, and one of the ones that I got was about like the Thompson sounding device oh. um, on the USS Tuscarora in 1874 with uh, George Belknap. And it was like they were off of the, uh, in the Pacific. Yes, go ahead. Sorry, I'm listening. <laughs> was off um, the coast of California um, doing depth soundings with essentially like piano wire and a weight at the end of it. Yeah. And I and they found some um, like trenches and they like didn't believe that they could have found the chan the trenches. Um, they the log book for it was so exciting. They were like our 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 technology must be wrong. I we can't have this isn't possible. Um, wow. and it was possible and I was like if that's what they were doing with piano mm -hmm. wire, what are they, what are they using now, you know? Right. And and how can we advance? How can I help advance it? How can I help feel that way they felt about discovering something? That sounds like an amazing class. I think we might have seen an Umbalula sea pen a second ago. A what kind of sea pen? Umbalula. It's they like. Where? Is, was it you, Kylie, who yes. liked the Umbalula? I love the Umbalula. It went out of frame a little while back. Oh, I missed it. That's all right. Maybe there'll be more. Man, getting to Waypoint 2 is, yeah, is a feat. I <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's, a long, uh, it's a long traverse up to Waypoint 2. Yeah, I don't think we need to worry about running out of dive track. Nope. No, eight point three is pretty shortly after it. Four and five are tight too. Someone's asking, yes. what are the bright red corals we're passing fairly often? Um, probably hemichorallium that you've been seeing. What happened to point four? <laughs> there are some bright yeah. red uh, mushroom <laughs> corals too here and there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, several people asking about. Did you up on the? Po Cause I, oh, sorry. Go I ahead. Cause I is me. I'll do better next time. Fridge, this is Nav. Can we make the speed uh, zero point four uh, of a knot, please? Just about to ask That's something about that. <laughs> force you to listen to all my stories. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, those are great stories. They are great. No, I was what, forced what talking to Suleiman while he was trying to do something else, and I was like, no. <laughs> he no. couldn't unlisten me. I'm really glad <laughs> you heard that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm almost at the end. I can guarantee you there's someone out there who's uh, feeling that pretty hard, so we yeah. appreciate that. I like sharing. I like sharing because I, th I think it'll land with somebody. You know, it'll mean something to somebody, and they'll they'll do some googling, and they'll find a program they didn't know about otherwise, and they'll end up on the other side of the planet with really cool people doing this stuff. Because that's how it happened to me. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Sometimes you just don't know those. Uh, you don't know what opportunities are out there. Yeah. Like I didn't. I didn't really conceive of um, geology as as a career pathway until I was well into um, my undergraduate degree. Really? Yeah. It's hard to really know, like, what does a geologist do? I remember being like, what does a marine biologist do, though? Yeah, and, like, like, every yeah. day. What jobs are there in that? Because you don't find jobs that are just like, you are a marine biologist. You know, it's, <laughs> a, it's more specific than that. And mm -hmm. Here, we even if you're not doing do. research, you know, there are more specific tasks, types of jobs that you'd have. I had no idea what those were. Yeah, it's not just, hey, you do a marine biology. Yeah, no, exactly. There's a huge diversity Oopsies. of different, like, <laughs> subfields and uh, focuses in marine biology, mm -hmm. geology, engineering. Yeah. Yeah. It can take a while to figure out what those are or what fits for you, too. Yeah. And that, that's an important thing. Sometimes when you try different things, you find out, you know, it's not just about finding out what you enjoy doing. It's um, sometimes finding out what you don't like doing. Totally. That's very important to learn, too. 
And it's so interesting because like this this field is so both both so specialized and so interdisciplinary that it all lends itself like no yep. effort even if you didn't like the the t exact task or job or role um it all lends itself to the perspective that will benefit you doing a different job because we all help oh, yeah. each other you know yeah way it should be we've had a couple of uh call for inquiries Bridge, mm -hmm. this is not uh, same step, please. And a couple of inquiries about uh, career opportunities for folks that are already in a career. Or how can they be a part of what we do? I'd say think about the skills that you have and things that you enjoy doing and maybe try and figure out how you can apply those skills to to the tasks you see us doing here. Because, mm -hmm. like we've all mentioned, there are lots of different skill sets that you can that can be applied to, to ocean exploration. Um, yeah, so really just thinking about like what you have to transfer. There's a whole team back ashore too that's doing all kinds of production work yeah. and planning work. And there's on the Nautilus page, I think, um, if you go onto the, the resources, education resources section, there's a whole section on careers and there are some videos where people go more in depth onto what their various jobs are and how they got there. And some of that can be maybe useful for ideas. Mm -hmm. yeah, and we're always innovating, always trying out new things, new robots, new, uh, new database information mm -hmm. systems, new communications. And to that point, there's new types of jobs associated with this, you know? Um, so sometimes that makes it, like, really difficult to figure out, like, what to look for. Totally. But, um, you know, like, like if, if you just develop yourself as an individual in this field, you, that's, you sell that. You sell that and somebody will buy it. You don't have to necessarily look for a thing that fits you perfectly. You just develop yourself with your real passions and your real skills, like soldering or tying knots or coding or um, species identification or rock identification or different these different things. And, and you and you pitch that to people in this industry. You say, this is what I've got to offer, you know? And people will find a place for you. Very much so. And we also have a, a crew that rotates on and off our ships. We, we don't have that many people that stay on for the whole season. I think only the three of the science team stayed on from the last. I thought just two. Was two. I think me and Dan. OK. Ooh, and a bunch of the, um, um, bunch of the actual crew. Yeah, ship's yeah. crew. Ship crew. They stay on for longer than, than we do. They have different contract styles. They have four-month contracts? Uh, it goes between four and six. Oh, and six. Yeah. Okay. I guess the folks I was talking to. It depends. Sometimes the relief people have shorter contracts, and then the like the regular group have a little bit longer. Uh. Also, it depends, I think, if it like overlaps with... Um, like the off season a little bit, like for dry dock or stuff like that. Gotcha. There's a question from someone in the aquaculture field. Is there Go any ahead. potential? Yes, we are. Raj. Back row, we're drifting west again. Okay. Yep. Oh, sure enough, we are. Praise this is now. Again, uh, drifted towards west. No, the we the ship is drifted towards uh, west. Yeah, good idea to stay on the west side. So, if you can um, move it to manual or hold it. Another sea cucumber. Keep passing those. It's a cool looking one, yeah. Yeah. And tiny little sponge. <laughs> yeah. That's so oh, yeah. small. I can't even see the stock on that I one. I know. Q-tip. 
Q-tip sponge. What's this dark patch what is on this that? rock? Yeah, like the yeah. Looks like hyaloclastite. <laughs> it's a very fuzzy <laughs> hyaloclastite. <laughs> Spicules. Oh yeah, I think so. it is yeah. kind of fuzzy looking. Is it that one? Is that one of the Russian hat sponges? Or? It uh, looks like a dead sponge. Yeah, it does. Dead yeah. No hat beard. Dead I haven't seen any of those mountain. Wow, it's got a lot of texture to it. That yeah. looked really strange from further away. I wonder what that used to look like if this is kind of like... Oh, God, I sh don't even know. you want to zoom on that? Yeah, let's get a quick zoom on that. Just to see what it looks like. Oh, geez. Wow. Gross. It <laughs> <That> is pretty <laughs> gross. <laughs> looks like a hairball. Looks like, you know, like a oh, cat God. came and just like... But when it was alive, I bet it was really eaten well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Come on. Huh. You might want to start running to the west. You got it. I'm running. Yeah. Starting now. Please. <laughs> Goodbye. Close your eyes. Vomit. Vomit him. <laughs> <laughs> I so got to go. We're going to go. This Ooh, way. I like this view question from the viewer was, is there any potential of aquaculture in the deep ocean? Not that I've ever heard of. Oh, wow. Um, Look at this terrain. depend on the resources, right? Yeah, I don't know how I would, and like how you would maintain it and service it and monitor it. Um, Ooh, it would be quite an operation. That would be expensive, yeah. Things down here grow really slowly, too. There's not yeah. a whole lot of available energy, so... Well, there are, you know, like ground, if they're thinking about like ground fish species, things like that. But I, I don't know. I th think they would need quite a bit more space. I don't know how you would go about. Yeah, I don't know. The only thing I could think of is uh, on Hawaii Island at Nelha, the Natural Energy Lab, they're pumping water from deep up into to the surface and that colder water fairly nutrient-rich water is used for various options. This is now, it seems we are holding position. Okay. So we'll move uh, zero, 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 next move. Zero, 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 Raj. Okay, dokie. You can see these little corals that... Yes, uh, bridge, zero, 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 50 meters. Didn't make the greatest substrate decision. No, they got a little top heavy. They found like one rock. <laughs> one. Not a huge hurry one. to get a rock. This is a 20. Oh, God. <laughs> one <laughs> rock. I haven't seen the keyboard come out. <laughs> <laughs> but I've been practicing in my off time. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. two, 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 three, three, four, 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 five. <laughs> That is my favorite thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that keyboard is you. It's crazy. <laughs> you know, do you remember how Michael Hannaford was talking about making a um, a sound, like a soundboard? <laughs> no, I don't I'm just going to do all the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> We'd like program it into her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, had a request for any book recommendations about the ocean ocean animals or ocean exploration oh, for we non did this the other day. One that Val recommended the other day that I started reading is um, Soundings, which is about oh, yeah. uh, Marie Tharp, who um, officially discovered the and mapped the, they were a little bit known before, but not fully, the mid-ocean ridges. And uh, in doing so, uh, provided a lot of the evidence for plate tectonics. Yep very cool book about uh, somebody who uh, worked extremely hard to get to where she was, did something remarkable, maybe didn't get all the credit she she actually deserved, but played prob arguably one of the most important roles in uh, uh, the evolution of geology as we know it today. Mm. So uh, you should read the book so she'll get the credit. Yeah. Yep. Yep, and that